so i would like to invite uh, ashish singhal sir on the stage yeah, so i will i will do that so please welcome uh, shri bp acharya be on stage श्री अमित मोहन प्रसाद सर श्री सुबोध कंदमुदन सर एंड श्री गरिमला सर सो लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन एस्टीम गेस्ट एंड डिस्टिंग पार्टिसिपेंट्स ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव स्टाफ कॉलेज ऑफ इंडिया आई डॉक्टर स्वीटी पांडे welcome you for the day long pivotal interactive workshop for msmes uh, we are delighted to have you all here today we are present here to discuss some important things regarding msme msmes as you know is presented in every budget document and is considered as backbone of the economy it contributes to 40% of the exports and 62% of the employment of the country even though there are a lot of uh, focus on msme by the central as well as state governments but there are several issues like access to capital raw material skill man power trade facilitation and so on so in this background uh this workshop is planned by administrative staff college of india in collaboration with center for innovation in public system uh, and uh, ftcci federation of telangana chamber of commerce and industry as a part of couple of research studies sponsored by niti ayog uh before we start i would like to tell you a little bit about aski so aski is the oldest management institute of india established way back in 1956 formulating policies capacity building and applied research as assignments constitute the bedrock of the activities of aski several studies conducted by aski have been used to develop policies of the countries coming to the theme of the workshop so broadly this uh, workshop is categorized in two parts first we will discuss a policy recommendation for medium enterprises and the second part will explore whether there is a possibility of convergence of the scheme to reduce the wastages of resources we will also try to highlight some of the best practices of the central ministries as well as state schemes to fulfill this agenda today we have with us distinguished set of participants including policy makers industry association heads incubation center heads academicians it is a wonderful opportunity for all of us to deliberate on important issues which will help the government to come up with policy measures to boost boost the msme sector so to start our proceedings it is my honor to invite uh, dr subodh kandamudan sir dean of training program long, du long duration program administrative staff college of india so Sir, so, uh, before that, I would like to request uh, Surubi to uh, present sapling to Dr. Subodh sir. Uh, good morning to all of you, respected dignitaries. on the dais shri suresh singhal ji uh, president of the ftcci shri bp ajay sir shri amit ji shri nivas ji my other fellow participants colleagues and friends uh, i represented represent administrative staff college of india in fact uh, my director general dr narmali bakshi was supposed to be here but uh, because of some urgent thing he said he will join a little late so i thought i will just step in for today so this is a very very important workshop which we are having and uh, we thought as we should collaborate with ftcci and ftcci and as the collaboration has been going on i think for ever since covid i think i am part of the healthcare committee so i know the type of work which uh, ftcci does and especially to do this important sector of msmes where i think lot of this medium sector especially i was listening to the discussions lot of this uh, small sector industries have actually been died out i think post covid so there is some need of looking into this in detail and no less than ftcci who can actually bring those partners so i think uh, my key words i think i always believe in collaboration i believe in analysis i believe in data so at the end of the day and also the best practices so i think this collaboration is going to bring in these factors because it 
somebody was saying it's very easy to tell that a lot of things have happened but why it has happened what are some of the challenges and unless you speak to the field we cannot get those information so it's a wonderful opportunity for aski we're doing this important work with nidhi ayog and collaborating with stgi we are actually going mm -hmm. to get a lot of insights and i would like to thank all of you who have come and participated and especially to stgi and also to ajay sir who has actually taken the lead in leading this discussion so i wish a wonderful deliberation for all of you thank you very much so uh, so we have two sessions the so first one is for medium enterprise and the second session is for overall msme overlap please overlap yes sir uh thank you so both sir uh, so now i would like to invite uh, shri bp acharya he is a retired ias officer former uh, special chief secretary to government of telangana presently he is chief advisor to fccci and he is also uh, one of our advisors for the msme projects which we are doing and which we will be discussing today uh, sir i would like to request krishna priya to uh, welcome uh, bp acharya sir with sapling please welcome president of ftcci suresh singhal ji mr subodh dean of aski mr amit prasad former additional chief secretary of up government shrinivas garmela ji who is the chair of the idc committee of ftcci staff and faculty from ftcci friends from the industry i see a few friends who represent important associations we have mr avk reddy of FSME Federation of Small Scale Industry. He not only represents uh, the SME, MSME sector in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, but he has networking with all the associations in South India, and he is perhaps heading that committee of uh, F F uh, the All India Federation, where you can play an important role in eliciting the views uh, of the industry. One of the biggest problems in the government is we blame I blame the officers mainly for that. we sit in our air conditioned chambers and decide policies eventually it doesn't work no wonder we never ask the stakeholder what is it that you want we think we know everything that's a problem with the ias we we don't listen to people we don't don't talk to people we don't ask what is it that is hurting the sector otherwise we wouldn't have been in this condition today the country would have progress much faster i am partly the it is a nexus of the politician and the bureaucracy which has pulled down the economy it, whatever has happened has happened in spite of it not because of it so whatever progress today if we say msme sector is contributing 62% to job creation it is in spite of it not because of it we have not made it easy for him or her the, it has happened because they have grown there is this innate sense in the industry i would i always say that <coughs> the entrepreneur <coughs> who heads an msme sector is the one of the most one of the biggest risk takers in the economy today farmer is the biggest risk taker irrespective of the monsoon he keeps on doing what he has been doing for thousands of years msme sector entrepreneur is the second biggest risk taker he knows that uh, eventually his margin profit margin is very less the government schemes the whatever is promised may not come at all if it comes there be thousands of questions asked bankers are not going to give him the loan working capital advance which they are supposed to give there are many issues yet some enterprise from within which is in many families traditional families the family tradition pushes them they regardless of whatever happens they bash on regardless so that has been the situation in india in this context when this project was given by niti ayog to aski and they told me about it i said yes i'll be very happy to associate myself two important projects one is to look at convergence of schemes there are so many schemes every budget there are they announce hundreds of schemes what is happening in government we never evaluate what has happened 
we never say that the monitoring and evaluation is the weakest link of our government scheme having launched a scheme we never look back to see what has happened to it so the uh, first project is to see the convergence of the schemes between center and state and what are the how we can amalgamate the existing schemes to make it more viable this is a very important uh, uh, area which is relevant to entire msme sector there is a niche area in the msme sector which is for the medium sector medium scale industry 100 crores and above in fact the job creation they are in the forefront the uh, small micro they do job creation but on a very smaller scale they they are most of the time struggling it is the medium sector which has some specific needs which is neglected uh, ever since the msme act i think it is now nearly 2006 and now it is 15 years uh, more than 15 years uh, in spite of all these uh, years of uh, the separate act for the msmes facilitation councils for uh, to ensure that payments are not delayed in, in spite of all these initiatives there are many areas where medium sector is neglected given a little bit of helping hand they can grow much faster they can help us to create jobs they very i will leave you with a very a uh, telling piece of statistics which a friend of mine uh, shared with me in the between the period 2015 and 22 10 million msme units closed down in india a crore 1 crore in this five year 7 uh, year period msme would have grown by another 10 million one, one more had it been a normal business as usual scenario except for the covid and the challenges demonetization gst all these challenges it would have grown to by another 10 million so eventually we lost 2 crore industries in this period of 15 to 22 imagine each industry would have created so many jobs we are all saying m m job creation is the biggest challenge today in india this 2 crore industries msme industries which would have come would have solved this problem had we been serious about it we neglected we had been talking about it without much outcome so now is the time we have to think of think seriously if at all we will tell the niti aayog this is what needs to be done ask he will tell that to what extent they listen to the our recommendations to what extent they listen to the views of all of you it's up to them but let us open for a things change change for the better that is where the this session is very important because we need to have your feedback we don't know we pretend to know that we know we don't know it is you who, you people who are running the industry day in and day out what are the problems you are facing that is where we will also circulate the hard copies of the questionnaire to you please fill it or send it by mail give it here physically whatever way your views must come without you telling you telling this is where it is pinching the sector no one is going to bother so i wish this deliberations all the very best we are having similar consultations in lucknow amit ji is helping there he was msme acs there so he is helping there in mumbai also in delhi so hopefully we will get a good sample of the views of the industry please circulate among all your friends those who have not been able to come uh, to the program today circulate and get the feedback and send it to aski or to ftcci ftcci has got 3000 msme members so mostly uh, msme sector Uh, if we circulate and get views, they will also we will also get some uh, feedback. Feedback is very important. That is where I request your assistance and uh, support for making this study important. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for setting the tone for what promises to be an enriching and productive day. Uh, so now, now I would like to invite Sri Suresh Kumar Singhal, sir. He is president of FTCCI. Sri Singhal is a distinguished industrialist with a broad portfolio of business interests. His leadership in the MSME sector is highly respected, and his vision will be greatly benefit beneficial for our discussion today. I would like to invite uh, Ms. Bindu to present uh, uh, to invite uh, to welcome Sri Singhal, sir, with the sapling. please join me in welcoming sri singhal sir
dignitaries on the dais, Dr. Subodh Mandam Mutan, uh, Sri B.P. Acharya Ji, Sri Amit Mohan Prasad Ji, IS retired, Sri Nivas Garimala Ji, Chair IDC Committee, FTCCI, Distinguished guests, officials from, I think they are not joined, Niti Ayog. Uh, they are joined? Okay, yeah. So, officials from Niti Ayog and ASCII, MSME experts and association representatives, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to this interactive workshop on MSMEs organized by Niti Ayog in collaboration with the Administrative Staff College of India, ASCII, supported by Federation of Telangana Chamber of Commerce and Industry, FTCCI. I am happy that FTCCI is associated with ASCII for this important project. I am pleased that during the workshop, we will be addressing a critical aspect of our national economic landscape, the development and growth of micro, small, and medium enterprises, MSMEs. As we all know, the MSMEs sector is the backbone of the economy, fostering entrepreneurship and generating significant employment opportunities across the country. However, as we analyze the support given to each type of industries, that is micro, small, and medium, we realize that there is a pressing need to focus on a specific segment, medium enterprises. These businesses, which bridge the gap between small enterprises and large corporations, face unique challenge that demand our attention and action. They face challenges such as, such as difficulties in accessing finance, compliance burdens, and market competition that could impede their growth and sustainability. Understanding these challenges and identifying effective policy interventions is therefore essential. I am very happy to note that Niti Ayog has realized the in importance of this crucial segment and taken the initiative to formulate a separate policy for medium enterprises. I understand that the purpose of today's workshop is to explore the rationale and need for designing a policy specifically targeted at medium enterprises to assess the current status of the enterprises examine the effectiveness of existing schemes and identify areas where additional support is required. I urge all participants to engage actively in the focus group discussions. Your insights, experiences, and recommendations will be invaluable in shaping future policies and support mechanisms for our medium enterprises. Let us use the platform to foster a constructive dialogue that will lead to tangible outcomes. Our collective effort today will contribute to creating more equitable and support environment for all MSMEs, enhancing their contribution to our economic growth, job creations, and global competitiveness. I look forward to a day of productive discussions and innovative ideas. Thank you all for your presence and participations. My best wishes for the workshop. Thank you. Um, thank you, Sri Sangal, sir, for your inspiring words and for setting the foundation for our discussion today. Now I would like to invite Sri Amit Mohan Prasad. He, he is a former additional chief secretary, government of Uttar Pradesh. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Sir, he, he, 
So, uh, Bindu, please uh, welcome sir with her sapling. Mr. Suresh Singhal ji, Shri B P Acharya ji, Shri Shrinivas ji, Mr. Subodh from ASCII, and ladies and gentlemen in the audience, I am extremely happy to be here in middle of all of you on very important topics which are going to be deliberated. Led by Niti Aayog and anchored by ASCII, two studies: one on how to push medium industries more in this country, and the other on how to ensure the convergence of schemes of MSME so that more people can access the benefit of those schemes. I'll be helping in the second. Study which is uh, being done by ASCII. I uh, have just retired in the month of March, the end of March. I was working there as additional chief secretary of MSME, as we were discussing in the lounge with some of you. Probably uh, in Telangana there is not a separate department for MSME, but UP has had a separate. MSME department for many years. When I started my career, and uh, after doing, you know, posting as chief development officer and uh, uh, subdivisional magistrate, when I first time went to the uh, secretariat in 1995, even then my posting was in the small scale industries department. Then it used to be called SSI. Small scale industries in 1995. So I went there as joint secretary, and uh, when life turned full cycle, I retired as additional chief secretary of MSME. So UP has had a long tradition of having a separate department for uh, small scale industries. Small scale industries, as we know, that they are the major, you know, employment generators after just after the agriculture sector and. particularly within the msme also there are certain sectors which generate a lot of employment like textiles generates a lot of employment leather generates a lot of employment so we we are aware of that and it is it is a very good move by uh, by niti aayog to try to understand what policy tweaks can be done whereby the medium industries are you know encouraged to move to the to the large sector and other schemes are merged together so that they can many a times what happens when you create artificial divisions so as some of you were saying that you know in msme sme is there but m is missing medium is not there many things you will see either it is the facilitation council or it is the treads platform you will find medium missing and small and micro is there so many many a times when you create artificial you know distinctions there is a perverse incentive not to move to the medium but remain in you know micro or small only and instead of moving your small to the medium segment create another entity so have another company have another company so that you can remain always remain small and you don't move to the medium you can take advantage of you know the, the schemes that are there so uh, this this needs a you know a careful relook that how do we ensure that the that a seamless integration is there when i talk to the you know, businessman industrialist in up also they also point this out that there should be a seamless integration so that you know there is no hesitation in growing up when you grow and you don't start suffering so the perverse incentive should not be there so i am sure today many things will come out of the deliberation and in the morning i had a chat with few of you five six of you were there and i was listening very carefully and i found that the people here are very very knowledgeable they are very knowledgeable and very articulate and they have you know thought through entire thing and they have very very deep understanding of the sector 
So I'm sure today's deliberation is going to be extremely youthful, meaningful, and purposeful. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Uh, now I would like to invite uh, Sri Garimila Srinivas. Uh, uh, so he is a chair in the State Development Com Committee, FTCCI. Krishna Priya, please welcome uh, Srinivas, sir, with sapling. Please join us in welcoming him. Good morning, everybody. Uh, warm welcome to our guests today, uh, Mr. Amit Mohan, Mr. B.P. Acharya, Dr. Subodh, and uh, our other guests from ASCII and Niti Aayog, our uh, dear President uh, Suresh Singhalji, my co-MC members, and dear friends on the station. I'll just take uh, briefly two minutes. The transformational journey for a micro to small and then to medium is laden with a lot of challenges and the ratio is skewed. So very few enterprises migrate or transform from micro to small and so on from small to medium, as opposed to developed economies where you find the ratio is not as skewed as in India. Here we have 96%, I think micro and two or 3% small and then one or 2% medium, uh, something like that, as opposed to developed economies where you have ratios of 70, 20 and 10. This transform, transformation journey from micro to small and medium is because of two things. One is the capability barriers that we inherently possess. Two is the potential barriers that the government is supposed to address so that our journey becomes smooth. Like BP Acharya Garu was very, very, you know, shooting straight from uh, honest in his remarks. Uh, right, the government is, we would request the government uh, policymakers and the government to remove the hurdles than creating a salubrious climate. So we would be happy if hurdles removed rather than giving us a policy. Because hurdles removed makes the journey very endurable, endearing, because most of the people who start off as micro remain micro not because they wish to, right? Because when you start off as a first-generation entrepreneur, you have dreams to become a very large enterprise. In fact, you have dreams to become Ambani, right? Or Reliance Industries. But it doesn't happen because of the continuous challenges where 60% of your time is spent on trying to remove hurdles. Just that 40% is spent on your business. So what we want the policymakers going forward is to look at how do we remove hurdles rather than creating a different climate. So there are four things as a medium enterprise. I migrated from micro, I started micro 24 years ago. Some of us, I mean, I appeared Digaru was next was my neighbor when I started as a micro. I became small, I became medium, I sold off and become a large now. But this journey, if you look at this, over 25 years that I've endured, sometimes very endearing, sometimes hateful. The mode was sometimes cruise mode. I used to enjoy journey because I used to grow at 40%, 30% year on year. Some was painful because survival. For three, four years, we had to look just how to survive. And this is this continuous, you know, up and down, crest and trough of trying to survive and, you know, trying to go on a cruise mode is a painful mode. This is because the government, I believe, should focus more on consumption, to focus on how to create growth for the country, automatically businessmen will go. Nobody wants to stay small. It's just a wish. So in this four things, the growth, profitability, continuous improvement, sustainability, I'm not talking about environment sustainability, I'm talking about sustainable development goals, the 17 that we need to fulfill as entrepreneurs. These four, when you think of a policy, I mean, today afternoon we'll deliberate, or today morning also, these four things, growth, profitability, sustainability, continuous improvement, should be kept in the mind of policymakers while converging on this policies. Like we have thousands of guards here, we have thousands of policies. But I think I would advocate the Sankaracharya's philosophy of Advaita. I have one policy that makes it easier for me to evangelize, so easier for me to understand, easier for me to digest. And as industry station, it's a duty to ensure that people follow it, understand what the scheme is. It becomes easier for us to evangelize provided we converge into all the multitude of schemes into three or four. On that note, I wish all of you a beautiful session. Please come out with your uh, gray cells uh, thinking, come out with policies. If we can't deliberate much today, we can always write and uh, get back to asking. Thank you. 
Thank you, sir. Uh, so now I would like to invite uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Surbhi Mitra for uh, giving vote of thanks to our dignitaries. Post that, we will start our first session. Post that, we will start our first session on designing policy for medium enterprise. So, so do please come. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Surbhi Mitra. And as we conclude the inaugural session of the workshop and before we proceed to deliberate on the topic of designing a policy for medium enterprises, I would like to express my sincere thanks to firstly Niti Aayog for conducting such important studies and secondly for bestowing us with the responsibility of uh, taking forward these studies. And uh, secondly, thank you to all our experts, supporters and advisors, Sri B.P. Acharya sir, Subodh sir, and Sri um, uh, Suresh Kumar Singhal sir, Amit Mohan Prashad sir, and uh, Garimala sir. Thank you sir for your address. And now we will uh, start with the first session of the workshop. We'll first give a background of uh, uh, medium enterprises oh, no. in the... Yes sir, sir, okay. I would like to call Dr. Sweetie Pandey and we will present uh, firstly to you the background of where medium enterprises stand, and then we will deliberate on the policy discussion. ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है रमन पॉइंटर्स में पॉइंटर्स ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है so uh, hello everyone so we are going to start our first session on designing policy for medium enterprises so before starting the session uh, i would like to request you all so we have provided you two questionnaires uh, so it would be great if you can fill this up and maybe at the end of the session you can provide it to us or you can send the uh, this uh, filled questionnaire to our email id which is msme msme dot asci asci at gmail dot com msme.asci at gmail.com. Please provide your comments on this uh, email ID. So we'll, now we will start the uh, presentation on designing policy for medium enterprises. Uh, yeah, so. My thing is. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, as we all know that the definition of MSME has changed now yeah. and uh, as for the new definition, the micro enterprises are those with an investment in plant and machinery or equipment of not more than rupees 1 crore and an annual turnover of not more than rupees 5 crore. Now, uh, the second, uh, sorry, second part is the small enterprises. Uh, they are those enterprises who have an investment in plant machinery or equipment of not more than rupees 10 crores and annual turnover of not more than rupees 50 crores. And the last one is the medium enterprises with an investment of not more than rupees 50 crores and an annual turnover of not more than rupees 250 crores. So these are the three sections of the enterprises. Now, why we are doing this, uh, 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 this uh, report on designing policy for medium enterprises? 
it has been observed that assessing whether uh, that there are four, we have pointed out four need for the study. The first one is uh, assessing whether the lack of policy for medium enterprises creates a distorted incentive or structure leading to potential economic loss and other problems. The second is to explore the benefits of policies targeting medium enterprises, emphasizing their innovative potential, especially in the Indian context. Third is to develop a comprehensive policy designed for medium-sized enterprises, specifying areas needing support and identifying responsible agencies in India. And the last one is to identify and document potential challenges. This is very important. We need to identify the challenges which medium enterprises are facing today. Uh, so th this is our last objective. Now, uh, this, uh, this, we have given a brief background of the present status of MSMEs with a focus on medium enterprises. Uh, so a total of uh, 2.6 crore MSMEs are registered on Udyam portal, out of which 2.6 67,000 are medium enterprises. 67,000 are medium enterprises, okay. Uh, Maharashtra accounts for the highest number of MSMEs in the country, followed by Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, and Gujarat. And the top, uh, so these are the top five states with the uh, highest medium con uh, concentration. Medium enterprises uh, concentration is highest in Maharashtra, Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, Delhi, and Uttar Pradesh. And the total number of medium enterprises from all eight northeastern regions is na only 96, uh, 968. So, um, so these states, the six states constitute the 50.2% of the total MSMEs in the country. Next. Next. Now, just to add uh, to what you were saying, uh, if we look at the percentage contribution uh, by medium enterprise, it's just 0.3% of the total MSMEs. The percentage of medium enterprises is just 0.3% of the total MSMEs. Contribution to what? And the number of enterprises. Yeah, in terms of numbers. Yeah. Now, in terms of employment, GDP, and export distribution in MSME, medium enterprises contributed 14.36% to the total MSME employment in the year 2020 21. And it uh, slightly dropped uh, to. This dropped to or this dropped by? So, we'll look at it. So, medium enterprises have more registration in manufacturing uh, compared to services. And medium enterprises have the highest proportion of manufacturing firms compared to micro and small enterprises. Uh, lastly, the export value, it's uh, the medium enterprises, though they are few in numbers, but their contribution to total export value is very high if we compare it with uh, small and micro enterprises. So this is uh, the contribution of uh, medium enterprises in terms of employment, GDP, and export. will be next. It's not working. Yes. So what we have done, uh, so before having, uh, before starting these uh, stakeholder consultations, we have done a thorough review of all the uh, central and state MSME schemes. Uh, so, uh, so as you can see in this table, so Ministry of MSME uh, has 20, total number of 22 schemes. Out of that, only 12, 12 schemes are applicable for medium enterprises. So the ap applicability of central MSME schemes on the medium enterprises is only 54%. Okay, now as we have discussed in the previous slide, that these six states uh, uh, have a highest contribution to uh, highest contribution in terms of uh, in terms of medium enterprises. So we'll see in Maharashtra, out of 20 state government schemes, all 20 schemes are applicable to medium enterprises. So the applicability is 100%. In Gujarat, out of 15 government schemes, 13 are only 13 are applicable to medium enterprises. In Tamil Nadu, out of 15, only seven are um, applicable to medium enterprises. In Karnataka, it's out of 27. Uh, again, Karnataka and Maharashtra has high number of schemes which are applicable to medium enterprises. 
In Telangana, out of 11, 8 are applicable to medium enterprises, and in Kerala, out of 6, 5 are applicable to medium enterprises. So you can see both the, even if, even if we talk about central government schemes of the Ministry of MSME, out of 22 schemes, only 12 schemes are applicable for medium enterprises. So this is what, this is why this study is very important. Is it, is it possible, is it possible that the medium enterprises are facing few challenges? which are not uh, tackled, which are not addressed by the ministry. And we need to identify those challenges. And accordingly, we will suggest uh, provide our recommendations on the point for designing policy. Go next. Yeah, so out of uh, this, is what, this is what we were talking about. So out of 22 schemes, so this is the list of uh, MSME, uh, the central schemes from, uh, given by Ministry of MSME. Out of 22 schemes, only 12, the above one. So the procurement and marketing support scheme, credit guarantee scheme for micro and small enterprises, MSME sustainable ZED scheme, MSME innovative, MSME lean, ramp scheme, IC scheme, ATI scheme, technology center scheme, market assistance scheme, promotion of MSME in Northeastern region and Sikkim, and the last one, self-reliant India fund. So only 12 schemes are applicable to medium enterprises. Uh, next. The remaining, are for micro and small. the remaining are for micro and small, but it is not for medium enterprises. So, no, so the out of 22 schemes of the uh, Ministry of MSME, only 12 schemes are applicable to medium and so beneficiaries are medium enterprises in that. Okay. The last 23 are applicable. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Of yes, sir. All 22 are applicable to micro and small, but only 12 are applicable to medium. Yes. Okay. Go next. So this uh, this is what we have found from the literature review. We have studied uh, literatures uh, given by the government of India or any particular ministry. And also we have reviewed some of the literature uh, based on, uh, built in by the research institute, based on some survey. So and, uh, from the literature review, what we have found that uh, most of the medium enterprises uh, faces these challenges, uh, which, is, which are written in the boxes, uh, inadequate capital, lack of finance, lack of skilled human resource, insufficient marketing support, lack of infrastructure, raw material procurement, lack of awareness and technological incompetence. Um, Raman. So as we have discussed, this were, these were the challenges which we found on the basis of literature review. Now, uh, so I would like all of you to please come in the front they have the scan. So there is one document in your uh, folder which which has written this question, what are the areas where medium enterprises need support for their growth? So please scan this QR code and uh, please write your answer. So everyone has got the scanner, so the QR code. So please scan it and uh, answer on. So there are three boxes. 
and you you need to write your answers on the answer on that so we would like to identify what are the areas where medium enterprises need support for their growth so as per your understanding and as per your experience to so please write down three answers of where medium enterprises need support from government no part 1 part 1 so the unity type three answers sir wo kar kar sab ko mil gaya ki baat ha yes also we have uh, uh, given the question in the questionnaire which we have shared with you yeah we uh bindu please help them with scanning ओके so as you can see on the screen so uh, whatever answers we have got from that we are able to identify few problems which medium enterprises faces the first one is they need support for export promotion uh ek ek karke yes so uh, so how many of you feel that uh, so there is a uh, need and support required from the government for export promotion of meat uh, for, for export permission for me for medium enterprises any would when would like to uh, speak on this please ma'am right uh. hi i am fanisri i am coming from the women association call हाई आई एम फनीश सी आई एम कमिंग फ्रॉम वुमेन एसोसिएशन कॉल वी एम so we generally focus on uh, women in manufacturing and uh, the most uh, common thing uh, or the obstacle what women face is about export promotion that's why i wanted to talk uh, although women are very good at uh, manufacturing in our experience what we thought what we face is they are very not so um, proactive in marketing and all so we have given them market linkages and all but when it comes to export promotion um the the exact link, see the export itself is a very big uh, term for women to actually um, articulate and actually there is so many nuances when it comes to export uh, women often uh, find it very difficult to understand the terminology itself there is so much of paperwork there is so much of uh, um, uh, if you talk about loc or whatever thing we talk women get scared in the sense uh, this applicable this is applicable mostly to the scale up of organization from smaller to medium when they want to uh, actually scale up through exports also through exports also they they face lot of uh, inhibitions first and then a uh, lot of support with respect to the market linkages from the banks and other also it's very on the um, 
what to say not so encouraging side when a woman wants to specific yeah yeah i'm coming i'm i'm coming to the um, you know specific sites also mm. so when a woman want to export uh, what we found is the mark, uh, the banks uh, guarantee what they want to ask they are very skeptical uh, skeptical about uh, when a woman is running an industry and uh, they want all the guarantees in the form of uh, your husband uh, is he there or is he supporting the sometimes uh, a woman is there now we know in our industry only who wants to export and uh, she doesn't have her husband support yeah <laughs> it's there sir in a broader aspect it is generally that is the first thing what we women face we are 30 manufacturers in our association so what we face is gender bias of course even from the bankers even from the bankers and that's the first thing second thing as i was telling the terms of export the terms of export are very confusing women fail to understand the uh, they don't they can't break it up into simpler terms the terms of the export and uh, third thing is of course the uh, we, we most of us do not know what are the cooperation and support uh we have from our government we don't we we seldom fail to understand we fail to understand what are the support schemes we have from the government so mm -hmm. that our journey of export is smooth okay, okay. thank, thank you. you uh so we have got all the responses we have got 24 responses and as you can see on the screen so these are some of the um, uh, areas on which as per your suggestions uh my medium enterprises need support i will uh, i will say one by one all of those uh, so areas so one is the incentives from government uh, second is limited encouragement third is uh, retribution uh, tax contribution nahi sir iske baad yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh -huh. Elaborate on this mere word. Yes, sir. They can elaborate further. What mm. is that? Is it about the question or in general, I think it's in that. Yes, sir. Please, please. Yeah, I think yeah, the idea is that only. So as you can see, these are the you know problems that have been listed out by you. So already, I think you know you can see in the screen, and also you have some other problems. What you can do, you can just you know. थैंक यू सो मच फॉर आस्किंग मी टू डेलीबरेट एंड गिव माई व्यूज the subject is basically very uh, dear please introduce about yourself oh my god ah uh, myself prem kakaria uh, i am basically chartered accountant but uh, managing director of industry called raj packaging industry limited uh, i am owner and managing director of the company is a listed company i am a member of managing committee member of the ftcci and the chairman so far till now i was the chairman of banking insurance finance and mm -hmm. Uh, other committee i mean committees also like idc all these thing my friends have been calling to me so and i have represented msme cause in various forum let me tell you first give a little brief idea of that uh once uh, minister of state was there we on behalf of me and sujatha presented a memorandum uh, then uh, our principal secretary jayatanjan ji on the request of central government called a uh, meeting for particularly for msme where most of the bureaucrats were there i think our uh, redisa was also there that day and fact, i represented fccci and then took up so many points related to msme and uh, just two weeks back i had been to R uh, rbi bombay where they called up uh, associations to uh, point out what are the problems for msme that was also on the pretext of the Uh, probably uh, prime minister's office and they have taken a feedback what are the problems msmes are facing that was in general not from medium now coming from my experience 
medium. I have on several platforms. I told uh, my friend that MSME, M you take out, M is not there. Medium is the most neglected factor is there. Why? I just give a brief idea of that. So first thing council which I am uh, attending is only SMEs are there. They are not able to file any uh, recovery student facilities and council. There's one drawback is there. And if medium has, uh, I'll just point out some of the uh, you know problems or points which are there, uh, if somebody can note it down. What has happened is now, uh, if medium has dues, uh, recoverable dues, he cannot go to the council. Now only thing is left for him is uh, civil suit. That is a very lengthy procedure. As a demand, as of now? It is yes. not covered. As, 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 medium cannot file application. Now coming back to another problem is that now NCLT of late, the criteria has been changed. Now any claim which is less than 1 crore, it, it is not entertained by NCLT. So what is left for medium is only go to the civil court, which is very lengthy procedure. Madam, you can make a note of that. The medium should also come under the facilities and council. You can have. Now, in briefly, I once I point out all these things. Point the finally, uh, uh, it will may come out, which I'll tell you later. Is there? Now, uh, now recent amendment is there in section income tax act 43 AH. They are also see SMEs are there. Mediums are not covered. Now, uh, government has tried to uh, facilitate participation of uh, small uh, industries in tenders, like you know, exemption from EMD, exemption from bank guarantee, and so forth, so forth. But mediums are not exempted from that. So that is what I think our friend has told that there is a class among class. Medium has been made a separate class, and almost all facilities benefit which supposed to be there to medium also is not there. One of them is the AMD, VG exemption is there, facilities and council is there. Now, bank, I'm not very sure every bank is, which is financing medium only is taken as a priority. Not, not, not all banks are taking into that. That's also not covered under the priority sector also. So medium has a, you know, drawback in getting uh, working capital and other, uh, you know, not only the facilities, but the consistent rate of interest also is there. That is also not extended to the medium. <laughs> Now, uh, another uh, big problem is uh, there, which is telling my experience, is that the compliance burden. That day, I was, I think, first speaker was there when J.S. Ranjit just called up the meeting. Then I raised several problems, like Inspector Raj. Multiplicity of inspectors are there coming to. They are coming both for SME and, uh, you know, medium also. But as a medium enterprise, I, I suffered it uh, because I, can, I, you know, migrated from small to medium because of my increase in the turnover. So, when I found that it is, there is no incentive, no benefit of coming to the medium, otherwise, I mean, lot of hazards are there. We are basically discouraged. I think this is the idea uh, which uh, Niti I has then then nobody wants to. They will have multiplicity of corporates, multiplicity of entities taking advantage of the SMEs. No charm of getting into medium because I know one year I got migrated into medium, hell broken, hell broken. And last point which I want to tell is the SME as a listed company. See, a company of 50 crore or 100 crore is treated as the same as a company of 5,000 crore. Okay, so we have to have multiplicity of audits, like we have internal audit, we have a statute audit, we have a secretary audit, we have all sort of audits are there. Same is applied to 5,000 crore company and same is applied to 50,000 crore. Now, next point is compliance in the company inject. All sort of farms, compliance, everything is there is applicable to all medium also. My 50% of time is going into simply compliance. Above all the GST problem, multiplicity of notices. I don't know when government will woke up and tell commissioners to stop it nonsense. Central CGST another notice, GST another notice, IGST another notice. By the time you give the reply, then the audit uh, notice will also come. I don't know why for audit. When all SOCO notice has been replied, it again for what audit? This is another problem which mediums are facing, and that is what they, many of the people, as Sir has said, don't want to migrate into that. If my marginal case is there, definitely he will not go. But fortunately, if he sustains, then he will try to go, but then all sort of limitations are there. These are the some points which are taken. Another thing is skill. 
as manufacturing unit we don't get the skill people you see we are in a very such a tricky situation is there we can't afford to have you know people will white collar they'll go to the big companies small or medium company they don't want to come because we are not able to pay them also and there is a gap of skill whatever we get is because the pay we get we don't get skill people they are not competent people also how we can you know uh, mine is a very technological upgraded industry there i mean plastic industry there i need a skill people i need a skill people they know automation they should know how to operate all these things but we don't get because the price they are asking is too much for us which which a small turner of 70 80 crore we cannot afford it so there is another skill gap is also there and lastly uh, for some of the friends has taken up the issue i don't know how he take up when the service industry also has the under the same definition you know when you have the service industry because the manufacturing is separate you have machinery you have a turner also service industry what machinery they have got no nothing is there so many are covered under then they are you know competing each other so somebody has pointed out that these all benefits which are available to SME are being cornered by the service industry. So that another, I think is a, we have to take a holistic view on that, not to debar the service industry, but probably the criteria can be changed. That with that also, uh, some points come it. I'll again come to. It. Thank you so much. Wonderful, sir. Wonderful. But just one small question. This is Dr. Karna Kroy from SP. So these are some of the challenges we have rightly identified. You know, to simplify these, uh, let's say, multiplicity of all these. So, what is your recommendation to the government? Can you just so highlight? I mean, what the government should do? You know. So you are telling that you know multiplicity of the government. So what is the requirement? You have identified the challenges, but on government point of view, what government should do? Do the government create a? No, I go, I go, I go, and I say I already climbed the ladder and come out to that. So first thing is the compliance burden. You know. You can't compare a 50, 60 crore company with a 5,000 crore. See, my company is there, the listed company is there. Every quarter we have to file. Ease of doing business. Ease of doing business. That's more important is there, where I can devote my time in, you know, productive work. That's the one thing is there. Okay. Then, uh, see, uh, other facilities or whatever you call to benefit, yeah. incentives. Okay. Like EMD, all these things is there. You, you, see, as you made a SME active user, no? but medium where there is no, 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 nothing is there. Can't file in a facilitated council, then EMD, VZ, guarantee, all these things are there. They are not exempting the medium scale. Why not? To begin with, uh, make them eligible to file their uh, facilitation council, one point. Then EMD exemption, VG exemption, and government supply, and all these things should also be extended to the medium. Okay. And then other point, bank. See, collateral fee. No. Only SME, correct? Only a smaller micro. Medium will have to give collateral. Even if you get a small working capital or term loan is there. Okay. What we are talking, I think CGMT is there. there is a IWAS, I say. Is IWAS. Why IWAS, I tell you? You already taken as a 5 crore loan. Okay. That is a collateral. Okay. When they have given the CGTMC or the Corona loan also, no. The underlying clause was there. Whatever security you are given is also applicable to this loan. So is the see double CGT commission also is gone and my you know is the secured from bank point of view. Why this sort of I watch? They can have a separate agreement on that, no? So. Yes. Yes. So one last point. So we'll take. I hope my uh, research team is taking the notes of this. So uh, yes. Yes. So sir, you please introduce yourself from which association and organization you are in, and after that you can come here and you can. Please, sir. Good morning, everybody. My name is Api Reddy. I am the General Secretary for the Federation of the Telangana Small Scale Industries. Okay. And uh, I got a few points. What was with the solution by the, from the government? Actually, I am reading out 
Our country is having a significant youth population in Indonesia. That is, as you for presenting great immense opportunities and formidable challenges. What I had, it has offered the demographic movement that can be the uh, hardest for acceleration economic growth, innovation, and development. The other hand, it is necessary to use of the ample employment opportunities. Quality education and skill development programs that truly increase the potential to live and prosper. Effective policies and standard investments in the. Why is the name? Yeah, yeah, okay. Actually, we are having a lot of uh, young force, uh, youth people, but no, 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 I'm, uh, I'm telling, I'm telling that. But we are not able to utilize the skill uh, that force. Actually, most of the skill, uh, skill persons are uh, crossing the borders. And we have to retain those people. And whatever the Indian pass out their graduates, we have to retain, we have to put a scheme for that to introduce the MSME sector and uh, to develop their product and whatever the innovations and whatever the, uh, uh, this one, uh, their uh, talent, uh, ideas is, uh, we have to use, not take uh, abroad. There's most of the things are whatever the clever people are moving to the abroad and in India, they are living. We have to make a retention for it. Brain drain. Brain drain, yes. Technical graduates seeking international employment have a wealth opportunities to enhance their ca careers to economic uh, prospects with the, with the tech industry. This is the, for this, I made one solution also to start up with the first young technical graduate in employer, financing, financing models and involve a mix 10% entrepreneurial investment and 16% bank loans and 25% government partnership. 10% of the startup as a major who is having a second knowledge. And 60% from the 65% from the bank. And 25% of the share of the government, not subsidy. Not subsidy. What is grant? Grant. Not, not a grant. And up to five years as a share of the subsidy, uh, government partnership only. Because, because, why? Because. He is a technical person, he is not only what is that uh, obligation of the statutory obligation, all statutory obligations he has to look up, not the entrepreneur has to look up. That is the reason a government partnership has needed and all statutory obligations have to be uh, 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 by the government uh, partnership and uh, only the entrepreneur responsibility is just production, marketing, Investment. That's all. There is then only the uh, entrepreneurial development here. Always once he started in the US, 90% he is uh, spending a time on this statutory obligation. That is the common point which is coming in most of the things. Okay, another point I would like to make here. Yeah. Yeah. Statutory obligations uh, are uh, really difficult to. There are some very routine ones which you can do in five minutes. Yeah, I, 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 I'm telling you. Without such uh, statutory compliances, which can be waived. The following can be waived. Yeah. For example, GST, I'm telling For example, GST, is of doing business I've written, and uh, several times I've written to the government of India, and GST. Not more than once a year. Certain things can be self certified promptly and correct. The concept of the implementation of the fully integrated e-invoicing system from the ground level for both purchase and sales is indeed a progressive step towards uh, streaming the uh, goods and service tax framework. Such a system would ensure that all the transactions are recorded in real time, arriving from the automatic generation all of the all types of the returns, which includes the GST or TV. Once, sir, Raja, once we started the GST, we have to start the from zero level. I, all invoices has to be started at the zero level. All purchases has to be zero level. Once we have started at the zero level, and uh, all input tax and output tax has to be real time basis. The credit and debit, like a bank account, it has to come. Once the real time basis of the transaction has gone, so why we need the filing of CSTR to be? Why we need the CSTR one? Because all in your system, what I am buying and what I am selling, just you generate the charge, we'll get the charge. That's all. If any difficulty, yes. Uh, GST one performance. Sir, I, I can, okay. I, I'll explain. 
sir what has happened in the gst you know there are so many things auto populated correct you are filing three returns for output input and then 3b also is there okay if you correlate it in, go to the portal you can get all the information but what has happened is gst this bureaucracy you see don't want to do any you know they exercise don't apply mind. no no they, they will not they will not apply the mind not only what happens see if they draw the data from their real then see they will get automatically information is there but they know they don't know they what again they will ask us to file this there is a reconciliation problem this is what is there this input you have taken it wrongly and then same sort of filing of returns is there same sort of you know show cause notices all input, and all go on all input all input, 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 input things are there auto populated in the system itself like if it is not there is a good duty of the government So to cut it short, the reconciliation is, becomes the responsibility yeah, of the SSC. Yeah, SSC. Why is the department? No department. department. They let them take the department because there is no system. Sir, 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 they don't sir. don't want to do anything. Don't take pain anything. If they go to the portal, they will arrest you. Yeah, simple. Sir. Because there is a media they made it. Arrestment is the power. So, uh, sir, I have made also another very party. The point which is very clearly emerging is GST compliance has become very troublesome, very difficult. One, not I tell you, I've got compliance companies are constantly there. There are lot of companies are also there. There, there, one. There's another party. Okay. So, so it affects everyone. Company, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, for it's not for SME. You have to pay the company where the separate. Uh, no, no. Yes, it's common for all. However, for all, sir, uh, no listed company, no MSME, no nothing. For each, at least for the sector of MSME, what I'm telling is, at least for the sector of MSME, the GST uh, input tax and output tax and the net system. Only they have to generate the charge on the fifteen. If the entrepreneur is accepted at the charge. He will make the payment twentieth. If he is not accepting, he will put mark it and so on. So bills are not entered, and then it's uh, yes or no. But so there is one problem that this way. Why they can't do it is for smaller enterprises. There's something for the QR. Yeah. Quarterly return, monthly payment. That means I am reconciling as a small industry, tiny industry, reconciling once in a quarter. So that won't get reflected till I return. That's what Sir was saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It should be a real time basis, not as quarterly so basis. Even tiny industries should also make it real time. Everybody is real time, no issues. I am now not real time. I am doing quarterly. He is doing monthly. No, no, real time means it's not like that. Real time means once the input to it after three months after uh, filing the return only will come to know. After filing the GSTR one or you will come to know. But then larger industries will suffer because what happens is yeah. if I don't get my payment in three four months, if I can't put the ITC, I have a problem. Right? Yes. So then if you deposit if you deposit a check or if you deposit a cash, if you do it, you can see. Real estate is not normal. I said when it happens immediately. Immediately. Yes. If you deposit the cash, if you do it, you can see you know pass book. But that like GST. GST. If you buy the material after one and a half months, you will come to know that the seller is a paid or the seller is a bogus or the seller is a real. Yeah. After one and a half months only. Right. That has to be real time. That has to be real time. Fifty days time is available. Uh, This bill is actually implementable idea. It's not a problem. It is implementable because all all NISs are EMISs. All NISs from the government portal. All NISs are EMISs. All NISs are from the government portal. It can be implementable. No issue at all. Sir, I believe the topic. Yes, yes, sir. Sir, I believe the topic we are digressing a little bit far from the topic. That it is because sir. Uh, So the, the, so that could be the convergence of scheme that what we are discussing on the point. So can, I mean, I, I'll be going to take uh, uh, inputs from GST as well. So we have expertise as well. So I believe uh, he is uh, also looking. Yes. Don't stop them from getting the payout. So another wonderful point what uh, Sir was making is about the brain. Yeah. I want to tell from the ease of doing business. It is a small or medium or it is a just and it is a how you are questioned that on what uh, level sir ease of doing business and what is the charges of obligation. There is these are the one of the best ease of doing business system. Yes, the problem only. Under it, it is the next area where you will be hitting the industry. 
ప్రతిదీ అండి ఏమని ఈఎస్ఐ కాని పిఎఫ్ కాని ప్రతిదీ కూడా ఫైలింగ్ మంత్రులు ఎస్ రాష్ట్ర సంస్థానికి వస్తారు కాదు క్వార్టర్లీ రిటర్న్స్ ఆల్సో క్వార్టర్లీ వై యాన్యువల్ సార్ వై ఆ స్టాట్యూటరీ అప్లికేషన్స్ వాట్ ఐఎమ్ టెలింగ్ ఇన్ స్టాట్యూటరీ అప్లికేషన్స్ టు బి ఏ గవర్నమెంట్ రెస్పాన్సిబిలిటీ ఈ హండ్రబుల్ రెస్పాన్సిబిలిటీ ఇస్ టెక్నికల్ పర్సన్ ఐఎమ్ ఇంజనీర్ సపోజ్ ఐఎమ్ ఇంజనీర్ ఐఎమ్ సపోజ్ సపోజ్ I am an engineer. I don't... I, last time I was in the beginning, the second is... Let him complete, sir. No, no. See, as far as you know, the companies that can corporate complaints are there. there are, several are there which are not required. Several are there where repeated is there. So, they may, can make a... See, self-certified, what we are talking of. Some of the things which can be done self-certified, but not all. Because the corporate law is there. Yeah. So some, some, see, exemption, you see, uh, the small scale or medium, whatever is there. They can be, you know, given exemption that they need not file it also. I say, director, KYC, I say. Every year you have to repeat it. Unless there is a change, why we have to repeat it? Sir, what, one thing I'm telling, I'm a new entrepreneur of engineering graduate. I'm having a plenty of knowledge and product development. Then to start industry, what I have to do? What I have to do? Right from the building plan permission or not, we don't know what is the set back building plan permission. I have to go somebody else. Why not? Government has to take this step, such a, uh, this one, statutory obligations. What my point is. For all such a items, that is... No, no, no. You're very well said, sir. This potential barrier which we talk about. Capability barrier is my problem. Yes. I grow the way I want. Potential barrier, you're pulling me back from potential by what? Creating roadblocks. One is this. An entrepreneur, technopreneur, True. is more into innovation. He wants to talk about product process innovation. It is a no procedure. He's taking a step back Correct. and saying, no, you have to know building permission. You have to know ESI. You have to know PM. You have to know this compliance. You have to file every quarter. This you have to file every six months. Not that every month. This is what it So for you need, sir, for you need, there is a separate consultant and all these things. See, as an entrepreneur, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. EOD is there, basically. EOD is there. Right now, there are 67,000 compliances the company has to work. It's reduced to 23,000. Sir, when... 20,000. Yeah, correct. But furthermore, consolidation has to take it. Required. To bring it down to below 1,000. Some of them are criminalization. That means yeah. you can be arrested for not complying. Those things are... Decriminalization. And consolidation of... These compliances have happened, especially for micro, small, medium. I don't think compliance with more than 30 or 40. Yes. Now, right now, 20 more. Sir, like... Uh, find out what is happening in Dubai. Find out what is happening Sir, what has happened is when JSG was there and then all secretaries were sitting... Because this is central level. Yeah, then, see, like, you know, inspector, I, I was talking about this. You have a labor inspector, you have a factory inspector, you have a boiler Sir, inspector. I was a member of the consultation council. Actually, last two meetings, I have written a letter to the government of India and government of uh, India has accepted my plea and that is the reason 43BH is introduced and all the payments are not paid on 31st March. It will be over uh, about 45 days. It will be dissolved uh, now. In this regard, it is, a, it is a effort of mine. I am telling, probably I am telling it's efforts of mine and government of India is accepted for it. Further, I am writing that and once the government uh, income tax is allowed, and uh, this one, GST is not allowed. GST is the six, uh, six months credit is allowed. That also to be disallowed. Yeah. Once the GST is disallowed, no direct payment will be there. Six so, we both should get a credit because I, I must have written it in five. Every. Every Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Actually, I'm telling you, uh, GST, as the GST Act 16 to, it is a uh, warranty days is allowed, or after warranty days only, the GST input tax can be worked. But income tax tax, 43 will be if it is there, for, after 45 days, the amount will be, they are disqualified for the uh, exemption. For exemption. Exemption. Expenses. It is a complex thing. The uh, dissolver bill, GST is allowed in there. Let's go to the next. Uh, yeah. So, sir, would you please? like to come and you know share it good morning uh, everyone i am ram mohan ramadi retired chief manager uh, indian bank 72 lakh
I have to say, the first speaker here, Lady Entertainers, he was telling me about the problems with respect to export. Export is nothing but sale in a different country other than the domestic country. Uh, that is what uh, the thing is. And then, any sale is preceded by a marketing effort. So in export, we need to have a information, basic information of what is the demand across all countries except India for Indian made products? Whether this information can be provided by organizations like Exim Bank or VCGC or DGFT, I am not sure. As industry, you must be knowing if that information is not readily available, that is a hindrance. Otherwise, making export is no, not a big uh, distinction. Uh, this is one thing, and then there should be a focal point for the industrial development. And we simply are talking about the medium industries, industries in this session. We can take districts as a unit. There are DICs across all the districts in the country, whether the general manager of the DIC or any official, he is having a list of real time data on the medium scale industries in that particular district. I have my own doubts. Those who are knowing it, you can share that one. And the DSC should support the medium scale industries within the district. This is one thing. And then any medium industry definitely is registered with the ROC and must be having a board of with a board of directors. Whether it is visible to have a government representative, number one, industry representative, number two, a banking representative nominated by RBI, is it feasible or would it be a headache? I do not know. Government, is, as uh, Acharya sir himself was telling, red tapeism, bureaucracy, corruption, and that is why many people who are capable of running an industry do not enter into that. No, that's okay. That is, uh, I'm just sharing my view. New, new government, you can have an industry specialist, industry body representative and a banking representative. We can have, that is uh, one thing. And uh, one more thing, you could supplement me. I am not talking about the factories or companies. How many industries we have in India? 200, 300, 400 industries, not firms for companies which are manufacturing. In this industry, there are several factories, several companies. I am talking about the industry and the industry body. The management of all the firms within the industry from the industry body and industry recognition. Government gives the industry recognition for certain industries. For most of the industries, they do not give. Even if the government recognition is not there, if the government recognition is there, there could be some concessions. Even then, either a formal or informal industry, they should be able to guide the on the firms within their industry. These are uh, some of the ideas what I wanted to share with you. And then any hand-holding support. Hand-holding support generally will not arise for a medium industry because they have grown from small, medium, I mean micro, small. It's not necessary. Straight away we can uh, start a medium industry or a large industry with a public issue that is also there. So this is what I want to share with you. Uh, I am not from industry. I have only banking experience. But I am a panel mentor for an organization called BYST, Bharati University Trust. Yes. Both were active in the industry of growth. Definitely. As of now, they are least interested to fund the industry. Working capital and all that. They are resist to work. These are the slogans which don't work. I agree, sir. But, uh, what? My my set of suggestion is that technology to some extent has reduced, has helped us in reduce the malpractices, corruption to certain extent, not fully, I don't say. What uh, uh, RBI should put in place that there should be simplest methods of applying a loan application online. Now, I saw a ad like thing, all public center banks, loan should be sanctioned within 59 minutes, but I doubt. Any application you upload 
the sanction or reduction should be in 59 minutes. I am not sure of it at the implementation at the ground level. Ultimately, to enhance the accountability, everything should be online because if it is offline, we, our sentiments, our emotions, our weaknesses, our bribery, everything completely, there is a faceless transaction, very rarely face-to-face, -face, otherwise faceless, and the escalation procedures will be perfect. If the branch manager is not sanctioning, rejection should go to regional manager, regional manager should to go to head, head of Within a, yes, definitely time bound balance. There is a time bound thing for a grievance is there. Grievance uh, reduction mechanism, but that is general for a departure reason. But with respect to industrial loans, there could be a, a separate channel to deal with that. Ultimately, I don't think more than a week less time is required to sanction a loan. And uh, branch managers also should be educated well that. Yes, automatic upscaled alert should go. Yeah, yes. And now for your information, you must be knowing there is an integrated ombudsman scheme. Earlier from 2006 onwards, ombudsman scheme is there. 2021, a latest integrated ombudsman uh, is there that we can uh, make use. And uh, this type of brainstorming and other sessions will be serious. Not so much on the industry. But that's not bad also. Not bad. So that, that is one channel. But I said that there should be an exclusive thing also. So thank you. Anything more I would put up in writing from here. Yes, sir. That's that definitely, definitely that can. That can. Thank you. OK, so uh, that's some of the questions. Uh, which we see concerns, you know, apart from the mentor thing, these are displayed here. If you look at here, especially we are interested to know about third and fifth. Third is which are the most effective or widely used schemes used by the media enterprise. Can you think of some of the schemes and, you know, uh, okay, fine. No, I think uh, this we are already discussing, sir. Uh, what are the ground level challenges faced by the media enterprises in Telangana and Andhra Pradesh? We already started discussing on that. Fine. Yes, yes, sir. Anyone? Okay. Ah, anyone? What are the ground level challenges faced by the media enterprises, especially in TG and AP? So, from that side, yes. Okay. Yes, Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, thank you for uh, giving good afternoon opportunity and thanks uh, for uh, Mickey management and organized by uh, administrative Mickey staff. Uh, Mickey Madhya Industrial Commerce Staff Industry. It is 2021 loss of income, sir. It is actually, yes, sir. Uh, actually, we have a community based based skill development program. So, Tarata, Variki, uh, EDP, Entrepreneur Development Program. So, we have conduct special conduct. We have to encourage we uh, have a collaboration with program in Hyderabad, Mahabhubunagar, and uh, 3DX programs, my import and export business program. Uh, main, main, uh, my main problem is that the training in small scale industry is not available for the bank loans, uh, bank loans, bank loans, Loans and sanction covered and Kichala Iban or Tunasa, Idi Mibus in his Kosanamu, Memu, Lit Kaplo, and they do loans apply Yasun and Sarkas by sanction shared Leru. One crore key, one crore key without constant loans is the money, when a government open to open the announcement only. Without Kalosal and initial one crore and Naru, five crore and Tunagan, even. 
ఒక మనము వన్ వన్ క్రోడ్ పెట్టుకున్నా కానీ మనకు ఒకసారి ప్రోడక్ట్ లేకుండా ఆ లోన్ సాక్సెస్ చేస్తలేదు సార్ ఇది మీరు క్వశ్చన్ తీసుకొస్తున్నాము హండ్రెడ్ అండ్ సిక్స్టీ పర్సెంట్ ఆఫ్ ది లోన్స్ బట్ బట్ ఆల్ ఆర్ ఆటో అండ్ దిస్ ఆర్ నాట్ ట్యాక్సీస్ లిటిగా విషయానికి వస్తే సార్ ఇది వచ్చేసి గవర్నమెంట్ ఎన్నో స్కీమ్స్ దీని మీద ప్రొవైడ్ చేస్తున్నాయి లెదర్ ఇండస్ట్రీలో మాకు స్పెషల్ గా ల్యాండ్స్ కూడా మాకు ప్రొవైడ్ చేశారు కాకపోతే ఇప్పుడు వచ్చేసి ఈ మాది యాక్టివ్ గా మాదిగా కమ్యూనిటీ వచ్చేసి స్టూ మేకింగ్ ఫ్యామిలీ లెదర్ లెదర్ మేకింగ్ ఫ్యామిలీ దాంట్లో వచ్చేసి సింగిల్ పర్సన్ వరకు ఒక ఇండస్ట్రీని డెవలప్మెంట్ చేసుకోవడానికి ప్రభుత్వం సపోర్ట్ లేదు సార్ ఇది మేము దృష్టి తీసుకొస్తున్నాము ఇంకోటి ఏంటి ఎందుకంటే మనకు ఏపీ తెలంగాణలో వచ్చేసి అనేక ల్యాండ్స్ వచ్చేసి మిల్లింగ్ స్టాక్ లోన్ మీద గవర్నమెంట్ అనౌన్స్ చేసింది దాంట్లో ఎవరికి యూజ్ఫుల్ లేదు సార్ అవన్నీ ఎంటీగా అట్లాగే ఉండి కొన్ని గవర్నమెంట్ ఓడ్ గా వాటిని సేల్ చేయడానికి ప్లాన్ చేస్తున్నారు ఇది మేము దృష్టి తీసుకొస్తున్నాము మాకు అట్లాంటి ఉన్న ల్యాండ్స్ లో మాకు ఏదన్నా ఇండస్ట్రీలు పెట్టుకోవడానికి మాకు ఏమైనా అవకాశం ఇస్తే మేము ముందు ముందు ఇంకా ఇండస్ట్రీలో గ్రోత్ పోవడానికి మాకు అవకాశం ఉంటుంది సార్ థ్యాంక్ యూ వెరీ మచ్ గవర్నమెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియాస్ ఫుట్ వేర్ డిజైన్ డెవలప్మెంట్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ ఎట్ మల్కన్ చెరువు మల్కన్ చెరువు ఇన్ రాయదుర్గ ఏరియా అంటే మీరు సిన్స్ రాయదుర్గ పెద్ద ల్యాండ్స్ ఉన్నాయి సార్ అక్కడ ల్యాండ్ కాదు నేషనల్ ఫుట్ వేర్ డిజైన్ అండ్ డెవలప్మెంట్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ ఉంది యూ కెన్ విజిట్ డేర్ ఐ మీన్ టెక్నికల్ అండ్ స్కిల్ అప్లికేషన్ యూ కెన్ గో డే టైమ్ పీరియడ్ దట్ యువర్ అప్లికేషన్ విల్ బి పర్టికులర్ బికాస్ ఇట్స్ ఎ కన్సోలిడేటెడ్ అప్లికేషన్ ఇస్ దర్ కరెక్ట్ ఇట్ హాస్ టు గో టు ఎలక్ట్రిక్ ఇన్స్పెక్టర్ దెన్ హెచ్ ఎండి అండ్ దెన్ యూ నో పొల్యూషన్ కంట్రోల్ కరెక్ట్ అచ్చా So what happens is that criteria is that within 7 days or 10 days it should be disposed of. Okay. If it is not disposed of, the uh, officer is responsible for it. What they do is in that process is there. They reject it immediately within 2 days. Giving some explanation or argument is there. So the two things. One is, okay, def- uh, defect is there, application is incomplete, it is rejected, it is fine. But there should be very speaking order or speaking point that why it has been rejected. you got my point that even a loan is not or an application is not perfect for the second day the operational officer who is actually responsible for it he will get an alert and that alert will also come to that you know the joint see all are handing low i tell you all are handing low this point i raise it see when somebody is uh, rejecting the application on the frivolous ground or wrong ground he should also be made accountable see, he is not giving within 7 days is the penalty is there but if is in that process what happens he is rejecting in 2 days my case issue is enforcement of the uh, is there no when he is wrongly rejecting also you should be made accountable otherwise 50% cases they are rejecting on frivolous ground i have attached means by drawing everything is there that drawing is not there who is going to verify that drawing is there point number 1 this is telangana second thing i uh, see for particularly sme and medium also inspector raj you should not have a multiplicity of inspector labor inspector factory inspector weight and measurement electric all all sort of they are different are there in spite of clear guidelines they are visiting the factories okay and not on records not padani sir saab batayenge so what is a one consolidated return one only one inspector that's all who is there sir raj waisa to koi bahut zyada to hamare suna nahi padta hai kyunki రికార్డ్ ఆఫ్ ద రికార్డ్ ఆఫ్ ద రికార్డ్ ఆఫ్ ద సర్ థర్డ్ థింగ్ 
third thing is there see what is my industry is facing and others are facing is telangana the hmda area is a uh, thing is very 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 big you know yes. and other panchayats are also coming into that yes. so there is a geo i come where uh, any industry there should have a 40 feet wide road government this is a road and all these thing inspected is government preferred okay my industry is very very rural road 30 in road in front of us this is all government property i cannot make it they are not making it also and they are not giving permission also this is my problem is still going on from last 5 years the 30 feet road is there no i am not responsible to make road for all the total things no the government has to either they should so my industry is 30 years old no, okay not allowing you to expand saying right when what is it 30 feet you make it now you say you make it in the master plan road nobody knows sir what is master plan is there nobody But, particularly see what about industrial area is not a problem but on private land which we have constructed our industry is also there Uh, see earlier uh, chief secretary sir said yes uh, he says there is anomaly we have to remove it but after 5 years also that anomaly is not removed so this is a, particularly i am talking from telangana point of view as you asked me that means facilitate growth how to how existing grow? units are there how to grow you say hmd see hmd see bound is there panchayat also is there hmd also is there mc also is there all are there multiplicity all are collecting taxes you have to report all of them so why any feedback on the ilas industrial area local no issues sir this is private but ila ka general ila there got different problem sir conversion and all this good point actually what is making the this team there is no problem so it could be a best practice ila is a experiment which is typical to the combined state of andhra correct 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 yes. industrial area local authority where industrial is themselves manage their they yes yes they manage their road within the industrial park there you see these are all not yes. applicable all correct but all all yes great they decide they come to the department hmm. but the advisory committee comprises industry representative they decide no sir no sir property tax and charge to yaspa bhi usko tax karte hain not that they can decide yeah yeah no that's no there is a different issue yes there is a different issue there ಅಪರ್ದಿ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ನು ನೀವು ಸಪರೇಟ್ ಸ್ಲಾಬ್ ಇದೆ ಅಪರ್ದಿ ಮುನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ ಸ್ಲಾಬ್ ಸೇಲ್ ಐ ಡಿಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸೇ ದಟ್ ಅಪರ್ದಿ ಕಲೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಐ ಟಾಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಕಲೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಬೈ ಐಲಾ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಆ ವಾಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ವಾಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಟೆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ದ ಮೇಜರ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಸಾ ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಚಾಲೆಂಜಸ್ ದ ಮೇಜರ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಸಾಕ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಫಾರ್ ಮೇರಿ ಮೀಡಿಯಂ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಇಫ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಎ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿ is a minimum 5 acres land in required as of now it is more than 10 crores in the ask invest in the land itself land itself there is a major challenge is the first challenge is the ground level ground itself is the first challenge this policy is to have it has to be it has to be either in the uh, either in the installment system or a 50% cost for industry or a, the government has to look after on this issue so uh anybody else they see they want to say something good to you so even including you you know you come here you introduce yourself and then talk about your company a little bit and what are the challenges you are facing or what are the potential opportunities uh, good afternoon all thank you so much for this opportunity my name is suresh and uh, uh, i am an engineer graduate from iit madras and i am calcutta i have a company it's a six and a half years old medical technology medical devices research design development and manufacturing startup six and a half years old headquartered here in hyderabad so my company is iso 13485 certified as per quality management system and iso it's called as startoon labs private limited we are a part of the yes sir we are uh, supported by ikp they are also investors in our company no sir my office is in begampet yes manufacturing we have a contract manufacturing plant in cherlapalli yes so uh, you know uh, i have around 6 and a half years in entrepreneurship and i have around 20 years of experience overall uh, this is a very good platform to to listen to some of the you know experienced industrialists here i am still a budding entrepreneur but uh, uh, you know what i see is there are lots of compliances for startups which many entrepreneurs 
you know, do not know. For example, myself, I worked in big MNCs like Tata Motors, Siemens. I had other startups also as Vice President Innovations and CTO before starting my company. And it spanned around 15 years of time. But even with that experience, I feel there's so many new things that young entrepreneurs and uh, you know do not know. For example, the PF, the ESI, you know, these things we do not know and they have a certain, you know, bar beyond 15, beyond 20 people we have to, you know, and then the company grows in that way. So we were just four people in the beginning. Now we are on 21 people. So the ESI, the PF things come into picture and uh, we did not do that. Okay. So at that time, so there's a lot of compliance and we have to onboard a consultant as it was, as it was discussed here. We have to onboard a consultant and then pay some fines. So these are the things which we do not account in our budget we do not know so i think you know uh, something can be done here i'm too young to speak on the policies right now but i feel there's so many and me coming with around 20 years of industrial experience i see this problem so what is uh, the condition of a young entrepreneur coming out of a you know fresh college right they do not know anything and we pay so much of money uh, you know as maybe a fine or to a consultant so these are some challenges which I can list and draft and I can share with you. But these are a few things which... So see, we have these incubators, we have these accelerators, etc. right? So maybe these incubators, accelerators, which are funded by the government, there are so many grants that go to them, maybe some good uh, you know, uh, classes can be taken, instructions can be given to the young entrepreneurs, which is still lacking. By the way, you know, since you pointed out IIT should do, I also serve as adjunct faculty at IIT Delhi. And very happy to say that I am sharing my entrepreneurship lessons, both from the compliance front, what a little bit of knowledge I have, and the product development, getting into market, etc. So we are doing our best, but I think if something comes in that way, why are the incubators? Because the, so one second, sir. The closest, ac the closest access we have to the government is via these incubators like IKP, AIC, CCMB, etc. So why are them only the funds come? Why are them only we get some mentors in these fields? So if something can be mandated there, they do. They do. IIT mentors also have. Yeah, all the IITs usually have. Yes, yes. But most of the entrepreneurs who come from IITs, that's my experience. You know, they incubate outside because they graduate from the institution. They may not stay in their campus. So I think that these government-funded incubators should play a bigger role. And the government can have some policies where this knowledge is deliberately given to the entrepreneur who is incubated in that, you know, in that uh, campus. So we are, you know, uh, sub one CR revenue now. Just one and a half year we are in the market, micro. So, true. But very happy to say before I conclude that we have built a product for rehabilitation sector, one of its part, a kind of product in the world. It's USFD approved, it's registered with CDSU, a lot of compliance we have crossed through. And we are currently in 13 states in India. Now with the USFD approval, we are also scaling abroad. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That equipment's name is CZ. It's a wearable device which can actually be used in rehabilitation post orthopedic ailments, joint replacement surgeries, post stroke, spinal cord injury, women's health, etc. It is worn by the patient, but the B2B, we sell it to the hospital. What it does is it can monitor the physiological activity of the muscles at that particular joint and give a very nice picture about the health of the joint, which is, you know, we are hoping it will become an appendix to an MRI report also in the days to come. That is the kind of device we have invented. Two patents are granted and we are in the market, sir. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful, sir. Thank you, sir. We already got two patents granted, sir. Did you get any support at all? Because it's a cumbersome process. You need to engage lawyers and... We did that. Yeah. We still have that. I will say rather every process is... No, so... We still have an IPR cell in the IKP. Uh, yes, I, I did make use of the IPR cell at IKP, the lawyer. And another thing I would like to point out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you for the opportunity. Really honored. So I think two of the you know, gentlemen spoke here about the you know, acquisition and all those. Now I remember you know when I was there in university, universities, so universities and IITs having a course called Electronics and Instrumentation. This one that was replaced by Instrumentation part was completely vanished. And it has come as Electronics and Communication. So until then, you know, we are providing some kind of manufacturing related course. 
variety of like plastic. There is no such engineering dedicated course there, really. Is there any course related to leather? So do you think that the you know, government has a large role to play in terms of uh, some, some of the some of the years? Yeah, the seats are very limited, sir. But if I got within the engineering. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is but this is you know it's very few in number. Can we uh, ask them to make the rubber? Rubber industry is also a very you know wide range of so they do a lot of R&D. Have some industry related so another question I have, you know, just to dispel the skilled manpower issue, do you feel that there is any kind of recommendation towards, I mean, linking this towards the NSDC that is National Skill Council is required or something like that? There should be a linkage that, you know, if any kind of skill related manpower is required, you can borrow or hire some people from, you know, that uh, National Skill Development Corporation and so on and so forth. So what is your suggestion here? How to, I mean, what should government do? Suggestion to all the medium skill uh, firms is that uh, they should employ the local raw people, raw unskilled people, train them, skill them. So there are two benefits. One, a unskilled person is migrated, upgraded to a skilled person, number one. And the cost of labor, cost of labor in the sense everybody is a labor. Uh, either we do mental labor or physical labor, the cost of salary also will reduce this initially. So that is, is it not feasible for exactly Sir, wherever it is feasible only we can go. It is a on the on the job we have we, we have a work like phrases on the job training, on the ground training. Jahanta kya feasible high to that extent yes. we can try. Yes. All no choice. We have no choice. The government support required. No, no. Uh, that's okay. My emphasis is that instead of getting people from somewhere, you recruit locally, kill them, upgrade them, then they can migrate elsewhere and do they take a job elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let quickly come to the third question, which is very important because I think in the presentation you know, must have you know uh, seen that there are 18, 19 central sector schools. I don't know how many of you I are about all the 19 schools. It, it may not be a bad idea to discuss all those 18 19 schools. That, that, I think that slide, the, if you can just, you know. Uh. So, see the, so, so the discussion is, you know, getting into very engrossing mode. I request to, we will break for lunch after 15 20 minutes, but after lunch also we have a session where we will discuss about all these things and all those. So, just one request to please stay back. Don't go after lunch, okay? Before the slide change, yeah. point number two and three. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. So, please, my research team, please, point number two. Yeah, what was not mentioned in all those 1920 words that you showed was one key element called innovation for medium enterprises. I'm not talking micro, small, I'm talking medium enterprises. Medium enterprises, if they have to really you know, transform and go into large industry, innovation is key. When you say innovation, it's not product innovation. So it's not just I'm going to innovate and invent a new product. When you say innovation, I'm talking about method, process, completization, product, anything. Anything unless you have the competitive edge. It's very difficult to move up from medium to large. So government has looked at it. That's, there's no scheme that is helping me in terms of innovation. When you say innovation, obviously I'm carrying a financial risk. If the innovation fails, I lose money. So what is my incentive to be competitive? Why do I? My boat is sailing, I'm making money, I continue to make money. So why should I risk? If I have to risk, government has to de-risk me to some extent. That means if I'm innovative, if I'm spending some X amount of money in R&D or product innovation or cost innovation, that money, what the government is saying, okay, I'll treat your expenditure, but you still have to pay the tax and rest of the things. Instead of that, what I would suggest to the government is that the company that innovate and 2%, just as CSR is spent 2% of our profit of last three years, if we are spending 2 to 3% on R&D, the corporate taxes should not be 22 and 25%, but be 16%. That means you are innovating me to take the risk. Or why will I take the risk? The money is going on there. Incentivize in a different way. Not give me money by subsidy. Don't fund my R&D. That's my problem. But ensure that when I spend on R&D, you please ensure that my corporate tax comes down to 16%. In a way, I earn my profit as it is. I don't lose on my profit. So I continue to be innovative. This is not just R&D, anything. Yeah, yeah, so 10,000 crores R&D fund. 
God alone knows what is happening. Actually, how I, I, I wouldn't want money from the government. I'll send my own money, this, but they will let you pay taxes. This so, example which works, correct, in biotech sector, is an organization called BIDAC, which funds R&D in the uh, MSME sector, but direct funds, direct funds, grant. So, so if you have to give a project report, they, they find it uh, easy, I mean, they are it viable. Some other for the MSME... No, not in the direction. Okay. On rest, I want to pay corporate tax less. If I'm an innovative that's company, okay. I'll pay corporate tax 16%. Yes. Not treat this expenditure, no. give me on that. So, so, that's 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 that. That. Here I have a point. In fact, uh, uh, so as wonderful, wonderful idea. In fact, uh, government is trying to put this current expenditure in the of the GDP. So, that's why I was mentioning, you know, that can do. Huh? Yeah. So, another in, in these lines, I have a question to you, sir. So, if you talk about team development fund, team ministry has a similar you know, similar fund. So, what they do, this fund is right, you know, if the industry is taking up some breakthrough innovation project, then the government will fund 50%. And, uh, you know, the industry has to, you know, yes, it's operational because we have done the evaluation of all this. So, do you think that this kind of schemes, you know, uh, will benefit the industry? If the government can set up a, you know, scheme for the dedicated scheme for the medium enterprises, for R and D, maybe some percentage of the you know grant should be given by the government and all those. So here, study by that, study the steel. Uh, so we have done entire investment. That's what they do. Yes. Um, the important thing is to you know converge the scheme because the multiplicity of very two schemes is scary. Mm -hmm. You got to have two or three schemes that is. Oh, wonderful. So, this is our actually the point of discussion in the second session. Okay, so convergence and all those. So, wonderful point. Yes, yes. So, we will show you all the things, their objective, what they are doing, everything will do. So, I will just medium ka dikha de here, just that slide. Regarding information, I would like to. I would like to add that there yes. is a lot of untapped local talent. They are not formally educated, but they have a potential, they have a talent. I just remind you of the example of Sindhak in the Malaysia. In the Weaver. And hundreds of scores and hundreds of people like that who are not recognized, who are not fair for them, and are not uh, what you call uh, given support to work. In the textile sector, they need the Weaver who have some mm -hmm. innovation. Wonderful. So these are the schemes you can see here an important, you know, interesting. How many have, have you heard of? How many schemes have you heard of? Yes. I think that's the data point. Yes. So first is your PMS scheme, document and marketing support scheme. Have you heard of? So these are the central sector 22 schemes. Like credit guarantee fund, you see your... Do you have any details? What happened? What is given under that? Yes. yes. So that is... We will show that in the... Uh, sir, 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 that's the point. So, what we will do in the next uh, you know, session, we we'll present the objectives and, yeah, and everything. But, but let me give you an image here. If you look at this 22, the term, you know, the second column applicable to medium is 89%. It has been mentioned as yes. So, if you are a medium enterprise, 1 to 12 hours the medium. 1 to 12 hours the medium. So, just one question to you with the entire audience, how many of you have heard of all of this, you know, this whole thing. Yeah, but you know, not all. Yeah, first one is PMS, Procurement and Marketing Support Scheme. Yeah, but you know, we will tell you, you give me the more details. What I am trying to say is... Yes or no, yes. Yeah. So, so, have you? Mm -hmm. There are two, two, two questions basically. Have you heard of this thing? Have you used it? Uh, sir, for the actual say in the ITEX Expo, we use this PMS scheme. And yes, and 60. Uh, 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 so, I am Vital, Vital Jahan from FTCCI. So, for the ITEX Expo, uh, Industry Innovation Technology Expo, uh, yes, FTCCI used it. For a reimbursement of the stall money to the MSMEs. Uh, so we got almost. <laughs> so for the exhibition, we got approved of 60 stalls, which they, uh, yeah, they, they, they reimburse, reimburse. Yeah, reimburse to the MSMEs. 
దీంట్లో ఏమైనా మార్పు చేస్తే డాక్యుమెంట్ రిలేటెడ్ టు ఫస్ట్ స్కీమ్ we found that on like in writing it is written that it's the beneficiary could be many medium enterprises but they are not but then in reality they are not uh, getting yes sir yes sir yeah. hello it is not verified no yeah. yeah sir that uh, procurement scheme is not available by any msme because i have done a survey for uh, about 140 companies in msme yeah i am rangarao i am a uh, management consultant i am working on msme on procurement strategy yes yeah the scheme procurement because 70% of the cost is involved in procurement so no company is not available that scheme yes yeah, as per my survey as very important yeah yeah sir nsic is uh, having uh, that is a body where they are having the they are giving but uh, yeah yeah procurement this nobody has available please share your survey yes yes i will definitely will so we will we will consult okay so quickly uh, we will finish it up in another 5 7 minutes before we this yeah yes cbt nsc cbt nsc is there right then very do you need to me cbt nsc ha that we will we will show in the next time ha next is your initial sustainable ready d ready d next thing yes we are doing so there is a scheme for you know to provide support for integration design ipr and digital msc is innovative Yes, yes. Yeah. Sector wise, they have given. Wonderful. Wonderful. So MSME, so all the teams are you know available for MSME. Just uh, wanted your attention. Last five minutes, you can just randomly you know give your view about any of the teams. So which team is working fine? And also one specific question I have before we break for lunch. can you remember you know one thing one such thing one or two things we think can identify as the best practices it could be creative or it could be uh, as a flagship things of the ministry that you are having you know liking this things more or maybe from any other any of the state okay yeah so any you know thing that you can think of that is best for the media program mudra that not at all accelerate but not reach to the video enterprises as per your survey how many people no i have not done survey because government of india has done a, a gap analysis on that so they have conducted a separate survey by the some other agency in delhi so they have conducted workshop in january so they already indicated which are the available because in uh, hyderabad is pharma and the other one is the aerospace which is emerging area and engineering also 
these three areas we can look into the ram scheme where it is not reached to the medium enter pages because they, i don't know exactly what happens very nice okay is it for individual entrepreneurs or for the government agencies it for no in the sector support the government agencies not reach to that uh, ramp because there is a msme department is i don't know whether they are reaching to the clusters or not there is a separate msme is there msme is there there is a separate msme is there but i don't know whether msme is doing all these exercises or right. so we are exactly at 130 just to summarize the discussion in the morning we started with a wonderful interactive inaugural session where you know all these points have come up over that key to challenges what to be done then basically you know from this session we have identified the ground level challenges when we have discussed about the challenges and uh, also what are the yeah so on yeah see most of these schemes that you are saying that which are eligible for my medium enterprises they can avail them only to associations or clusters not independently that is a problem they are not available to individual individual so this is a very good point you know i mean individually they are not able to you know avail this we are you know into a very uh, wonderful mode of uh, discussion right now we have identified the issues line level issues and uh, you know i think five six recommendations also that government could do in terms of skilling in terms of you know providing the marketing support providing support for the gst simplify tax structures and so forth but the this question will become more interesting when we talk about the scheme so as you can see all this simple picture scheme for all the visual and also i think we have identified a few eight level best practices as well so like that could be readily ha huh. ha huh. absolutely no uh-huh. on the one night thing yes sir so what we will do what we will do in the post on the plan is like that individually we will show you each of these things what this thing does the support objective what the target of beneficiary and then we will discuss out of these 20 things can we identify four five let's a broad basket to which we can even converge these things or we can come up with a simplified structure and also one important thing is that we need any other means to mainly in this textile I mean, it's a pleasure. You are having some things. You are finding it very, very attractive. You know, maybe the central government can look into those things as well, and you know, can replicate their model. So this is one of the ideas. Another one, if you have some kind of interesting things which you are having from the state, the Nilana and all those, we can take the best practice also forward. So, uh, yeah. Last comment. Yes. Uh, Sir, this is good exercise is being done, but uh, I have my own apprehensions. msme sme whatever is there whether because there is a, another lobby working on that that mediums and large are eating away the, or particularly medium will eat away the sme benefits is there so i don't know whether it is uh, acceptable to government or not but the exercise is worth doing also if at all government finds that medium may eat sme then i would suggest then that you can you, you are already having a class out of class also so you can have a sme as a separate and medium scale you can have a separate act itself so that they are genuinely benefited out of that and people who are interested they can love to migrate from small to medium because there is always a you know conflicting interests are there so there's the last part is that if they are not able to give all the benefits to medium then i would suggest that there should be a separate law in the medium itself right please thank you act here Hmm. So I would thank Nitya in this regard. Why? Because you know, at least they have identified there is a problem. There was distorted incentive structure, and you know that's why we are conducting this study. We can we devise some kind of policy specifically for the you know medium size entrepreneurs. So uh, with this positive note, we will now uh, break for lunch, and uh, there will be more rigorous discussion to uh, come. So come back, start back. One thirty is now. Two fifty nineteen is okay. 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 Yeah, yeah. No, uh, why I am saying two fifty because then we will be able to start the session at two thirty. Okay. So please, uh, be assembled here by two fifty. We will start the session on Wednesday. Okay. So thank you so much.
salud está. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back again to both plan session. Now our discussion will be centered around one very important topic. You know, convergence of MSME schemes. So broadly, there are three parts of this discussion. So as you know that you know there are uh, multiple central sector schemes. But from the morning's discussion, we have identified that you know out of the 22 central sector schemes, uh, very few people are aware about all the schemes. Okay. So can we you know convert some of these schemes? So to prepare a simplified basket, maybe five or six schemes will take into account. You know all the all the you know uh, uh, related problems of MSMEs. So this is one aspect which we would like to discuss. Second aspect is you know that you know there are different central ministries like Ministry of Labor, Textile, so on and so forth. So these uh, different government ministries have their own schemes. So question is sometimes these schemes are also you know. Uh, closely related or closely similar uh, with these central government schemes. So, can we identify uh, some of the, those schemes as a best practices, which we feel that you know uh, can be implemented or can be fine tuned, and that model can be taken over by the government for a smooth um, implementation. Third aspect is, let's say the state schemes. State government have also their schemes related to MSMEs. So, can we identify some of the best practices? Let's say in Lucknow, there is one very much very wonderful schemes, prevalent especially for the you know leather sector. So, can we identify those schemes which are prevalent in state and which is I mean helping all these uh, beneficiaries, the medium size as well as uh, MSMEs. So, broadly, these are the three aspects we'll be going to uh, discuss now. But before we start the informal discussion or informal FGD, I would uh, uh, you know like to request our guest uh, you know we are very much uh, fortunate that uh, you know some eminent experts are present here we would also like to have their views uh, related to these topics so uh, ravi kumar ji is here okay so uh, may i now request uh, three uh, Surya Prakash Gaur, sir, uh, if you can please come up the stage and, uh, you know, have seat here in our dais, join us for the dais. We have with us also uh, Mr. K. K. Agarwal, who is the head of uh, quality assurance of BEL. Uh, Surya Prakash, yeah, please. So, K. K. Agarwal, sir. So let me quickly introduce our uh, guest. So Ravi Kumar Saab will also join. So uh, we have with us uh, Mr. K. K. Agarwal. He's a head of quality assurance at Bell, and uh, he will also share our experience with us. But before that, hmm? yeah, yeah. Bharat, Bharat Electronics Limited. So uh, before he starts his, uh, you know, address. Or I request Sir to, I mean, say a few words about this team. So may I now request uh, Dr. Sweetie to welcome him with a sapling. So I'm inviting uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Ravi Kumar Sir. So, Vice President of uh, FTCCI, who is the guest of honor of this uh, session. <clears throat> so, uh, Mr. Ravi Kumar is a senior Vice President of FTCCI and is renowned for his work in the defense, aerospace, automotive, and electronics industries. Additionally, his involvement with the Art of Living Foundation and Sports underscores his diverse contribution to both professional and 
personal arenas i would now like request bindu to welcome sir with a sapling so we have with us uh, mr uh, surya prakash gaur uh, he is also uh, incidentally the advisor of this study he is helping our research team to you know formalize the questions presentations as well as the report so he is a faculty member of uh, nims me ministry of msme government of india and mr gaur's expertise in enterprise development and uh, also uh, he has a lot of expertise in uh, cluster development may i now request survi uh, to welcome mr gaur with a uh, I would now like to request Mr. Ravi Kumar uh, to, you know, address the gatherings. Sir, uh, welcome for your speech. good evening one and all and uh, i think it's appropriate that they address the gathering and give you the information rather me but however uh, uh it's a wonderful topic and it's the need of the hour and we need to really uh, ensure and educate all the msmes that they understand what these schemes are and things like that but at the ground level what little i understand as being an industrialist for the past 34 and 35 years or so now uh we have lots of schemes in msmes and things like that and at the state level and at the central level and incidentally what we feel is somewhere there are some duplication of schemes and things like that one and second uh, majority of the msmes are uh, novice about this they are not uh, aware of these schemes and even if they are aware uh, at my level okay i have not involved as a director in my company about 5 uh, 6 years back one of my team members uh, our colleagues have said let's apply for this for one of my companies i had about four five companies at that time all we merged now so the process of application is also so tough and the, it's so stringent i do understand that the government would like to give that schemes to the deserved people but at the same time a deserved people when he applies it becomes so difficult for them and then the process is so tough and by the time the scheme is given and the way you plan and then when you want to implement it doesn't happen for example uh, if i need to tell you a lot of us go for bank loans with a proposal we do our dpr and things like that and we go for a proposal sanction and by the time the proposal gets sanctioned the dpr with which i went has no value now because in 6 months the whole scenario changes the same thing happens to these schemes also so i feel that we need to deliberate and we need to really look into it and i repeat again the need of the r is we need to um, ensure that every msme micro or small or people uh, there should be a way for them to know like we have uh, when it comes to gst or when it comes to taxes and things like that the government ensures that every company knows it the day you start you have no choice people to pay so similarly this also should get into a system where everybody is educated otherwise probably they in a layman's language if i need to say probably they should ensure that you don't get the uh, license or the certificate industry certificate and things like that so everything should be incorporated in such a manner and then we do it and along with this i also feel uh, we need to this is not the topic right now but also we need to have those skills like we have this ignite and things like that lot of skill uh, centers are there skill development in that we need to have something where we also educate people about this msmes and work on it and i think we are all waiting for the experts to speak on this with this uh, we should start i i think no sir you please come <laughs> yeah you uh, skill development and you do get a lot of subsidies the government gives the funds and then the state government so it's it's something where the finance is also matched 
and I think I'll throw some more light after the session, but it's something amazing. We should do it. Yes, please. Thank you. Yeah, we have, yeah, we have about 15 ITIs in that, which we have adopted from FTCCI and we're doing. And now Tata has joined us and trying to help us because in that scheme also, as I was sharing with you, we have this like electric department and we have this diesel mechanic and we have most of the subjects have become now redundant and obsolete. So the need of the R is like you need to. So now Tata has come into play and this uh, they have taken over 77 ITIs in Tamil Nadu and they have funded something like about 20 crores. And uh, each ITI, they've built about 10,000 square feet of space and put the modern uh, machinery. So similarly in Telangana also now the present government has signed a contract wherein they're picking up some 15 ITIs out of 77 uh, out of whatever ITIs. We, we have 15, but overall is something more. And they're going to build and Tata is going to play a role in designing the subject and the curriculum are also, which is the need of the hour. So these are the things which are happening and we do have a skill center in FTCC also in the second floor where I think every week we have some program or some training happening or uh, on some subject or so. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, sir. Ravi Kumarji for your succinct presentation. So, uh, sir has highlighted an important three points. You know, he talked about there is a need of convergence of some of the schemes. Uh, secondly, he has highlighted that, you know, the schemes, I mean, why, while these MSMEs are applying that, applying for those schemes, that needs to be simplified. So, there is a requirement of uh, creating a kind of a simple, simple structure. And thirdly, one very important aspect he mentioned that, you know, development of some skill center, because in the morning also we discussed that, you know, Skilling is one of the important aspects, especially for the MSMEs. Thank you so much, sir. So may I now request uh, Mr. K.K. Agarwal, uh, who is heading a very, very important department in Bharat Electronics Limited, which is a Navaratna company. This, uh, you know, he is heading the quality assurance cell. It is absolutely important for the MSMEs to adhere to the quality standards and all those. So we will now hear from you, sir. So what are the you know challenges and uh, you know uh, ground level challenges we are facing related to this quality? So welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, respected dignitaries on the dais as well as off the dais, and most important, uh, the reps of uh, MSMEs who are the reason for today's workshop. Uh, as introduced, uh, I'm part of uh, corporate quality. In fact, I'm head of corporate quality of Bharat Electronics. And uh, we do understand, appreciate, and work towards involvement of MSMEs in the process of nation building. I'll just take two minutes to give the background, like uh, uh, what role MSMEs can play and what role BL is already playing and aims to play. Uh, well, Bell was uh, established in 1954 by then government uh, to be part of nation building tribe because uh, we achieved uh, uh, independence in uh, 47 and hardly our industry was trying to stand on our own leg. And it was not possible for our private sector to have huge investments required to establish large industries. So government invested and uh, most of the public sector organizations in various fields were established. Bell for uh, defense communication requirements fulfillment. Well, uh, we have been participating in that nation building uh, exercise for last uh, seven decades. Now, now government of India uh, aims to make the nation developed by 2047, another 23 years from now. Now, in these last seven decades, sir, many private industries have come up, have flared very well, and MSMEs are the most important part of that private industry. Why most important part is, basically, uh, now when we talk of industry, we talk of uh, industry ecosystem. And in order to truly build the nation to be a developed nation by 2047, 
we have to take indian industry as a unit not a separate industries and msmes are backbone for the indian industry as on now we very well understand appreciate and we are working towards how we are working i'll aspect i'll touch upon uh, quality aspects being part of a quality team of bell other i think business uh, aspects our experts uh, uh, have been sharing and will be sharing now uh, we are very closely working with qcfi our sunil shivastav sir is here and uh, qci qcfi is an organization who basically works at grassroots level to ensure quality of products and services to ensure a uh, dual uh, 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 pronged strategy one is uh, training and skilling operators so that they become capable to solve their day to day issues and improvements requirements themselves in the form of qcc is quality control centers also qcfi uh, has taken a lot of initiatives in the field of uh, lean six sigma and other which aim at breakthrough improvements i'll touch upon these things in slightly greater details now qci another uh, autonomous organization under the aegis of government of india they are basically driving quality throughout the nation now qci has a wonderful scheme called zed zero effect zero defect now we have already collaborated with qci in fact we have identified certain channel partners for qci who handhold msmes and uh, i am very uh, pleased to uh, share on 13th of august we are having first uh, sharing and handholding session of msmes in our bangalore complex basically bell is a pan india organization we have seven manufacturing locations bangalore being our mother plant so we thought that this initiative we will start from bangalore only to have maximum coverage so number of msmes are participating and bell uh, is planning to act as an umbrella organization for this initiative now in phased manner we are planning to have this interaction hand holding knowledge sharing and then further uh, training and implementation at the msme premises with the help of those uh, channel partners of qci with bell acting as an umbrella organization that is our plan now i will just uh, share few of the important uh, aspects of that zet zed scheme basically it aims towards training the msmes how to make sure that uh, uh, we don't have any adverse impact on the environment which is a need for sustenance now it has it is it, it has become so severe that it has become an absolute necessity for sustenance and the zero defect another equally important aspect uh, and mostly uh, forgotten i'll just take few minutes uh, these are the defects in our products services systems we supply they basically act as slow poison for ourselves how i'll just uh, share with an example uh we know the uh, concept of quality cost otherwise i'll just take two minutes see whatever we produce there are four components of quality cost associated with that production or any service first one we call as prevention cost the cost we incur for preventing any defect to take place it is said that prevention is better than cure so same is true in terms of quality as well it's a healthy uh, component and we need to absolutely focus on that optimize that to make sure that overall quality cost is minimum second is appraisal cost the cost we incur in various measurements testing quality assurance activities and all that that is again a fairly healthy component but that component we have to closely monitor and we have to optimize there comes uh, the concept of industry and quality 4.0 
which is another important concept uh, which uh, has been uh, adopted by many countries in fact it is started with germany and now uh, many of the indian industries are working uh, towards that including msmes uh, this concept of uh, industry and quality 4.0 a subset of industry 4.0 is uh, a key towards optimizing the quality cost we define industry and quality 4.0 as secured automation of process of processes with wisdom underlined leading to stakeholders delight enhancement so once uh, we implement industry and quality 4.0 with this end objective our appraisal cost is going to come down drastically leading to drastic reduction in our internal and external flow cost and leading to overall much lower quality cost ah uh, the third and fourth components are internal flow cost and external flow cost they are significantly higher in most of our industries as uh, uh, we have not yet uh, achieved the status of zero defect we are on the journey and i am sure that we will achieve that status much before 2047 we'll try to understand uh, the 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 power of this concept with a very small example suppose a small uh, industry having a having an annual turnover of 100 crores has a uh, internal uh, failure cost let's say close to 5% and there is a thumb rule that whatever be the internal failure cost similar uh, is the external failure cost as well because if some defects are there in the products we deliver some defects will be at the border which will come out after certain amount of usage now if we take 10% total internal and external failure cost with the, the proper implementation of zed concepts with the proper awareness with the proper uh, implementation of quality concepts in our processes if we reduce it just by 50% let us say over a period of time maybe 3 years or so how much will be the saving the saving will be to the tune of 5 crores and how much we will invest in this process maybe 1 crore maybe 50 lakhs so it is an urgent need to understand this concept and to implement these concepts of zed which are heavily subsidized by government of india in fact uh, there are three levels of recognition as part of zed certification that branch is the lowest level it is applicable for very small industries then silver and then gold branch anyway it's almost 100% subsidized uh, and silver and gold are close to 80 and 60% subsidized depending on the size and area of the operation of that uh, uh, msme so uh, my request to all msmes is to make good use of uh, uh, this uh, zedd scheme in terms of uh, in the field of uh, quality uh, improvements uh, which is uh, being steered by uh, qci and uh, as a bell uh, we have already started participating and we plan to participate in a, a big way to cover uh, all our uh, units and uh, spus another aspect uh, i will cover is see do most of our discussions are centered around business aspects uh, having loans and uh, other schemes and all those things but let me share this aspect of quality is basically backbone for the sustenance and growth of business we always say that quality is something like blood flowing in the body so once uh, we we in fact uh, all the organs of the body are tested through blood only this is the blood which takes uh, oxygen that is pran vayu to each and every cell of the body to keep them alive and functioning so similar is the importance of quality in all our organizations be it manufacturing organization be it service organization this basically provides pran vayu for the uh, sustenance and growth of the organization that is so important 
So uh, again, my request is that uh, let us uh, sensitize ourselves. Let us uh, work towards that. Uh, government of India is already uh, uh, steering uh, a scheme for that uh, through QCI. Uh, QCFI is uh, is another wonderful organization who are uh, who are uh, steering the concepts of uh, uh, quality assurance, uh, uh, quality building, and quality integration across the organizations at grassroots level as well as uh, uh, with the intention of uh, breakthrough uh, improvements. Thank you so much. So thank you so much, uh, Mr. K.K. Agarwal, sir, for your wonderful lecture. Sir has, uh, you know, uh, addressed very two key important points. Sir has highlighted the role of bail in working with the, you know, organization QCI and QCIF and ultimately creating an enabling ecosystem and handholding the MSMEs, you know, for quality assurance, quality building and quality control. And secondly, very important point he has, uh, you know, made, you know, the industry and quality 4.0. It's a subcomponent of industry 4.0 and how, you know, different organizations can come under an umbrella and can, you know, work on this concept. So this will definitely help our MSME uh, to create zero discharge product. Also, he talked about the, you know, implementation of the ZED scheme and how ZED scheme is helping the environment as well as in overall quality improvement. So uh, we have with us Dr. Before I go to the uh, go to Gaur sir, so we have with us uh, Dr. Rajkumar Watekar, Additional Director of Industries, Government of uh, Telangana. So uh, thank you so much for sir for our accepting our invitation. So uh, we are honored to have you. So basically, this scheme is about uh, talking about the convergence. So so that I mean you know. There are several schemes for MSMEs, not only under the central ministries, but when we talk about MSME, obviously, MSME is not an industry, right? So agriculture, textile, leather, everything comes under MSME. So there are amalgamation of a lot of plethora of schemes. So can we convert some of these schemes? When we talk about convergence, convergence could be in terms of convergence of offices, convergence of schemes, convergence of simplified structure, and convergence of component as well. So. Uh, so I would request you to highlight on some of these uh, aspects. So uh, I'm welcoming you, sir, to uh, deliver a special address here. And before that, I would uh, request Krishna Priya uh, to welcome sir with a sapling. So please. So please, first, uh, you, may I now request you to, I mean, you know, raise the dais. And before delivering your special address, I would now request Krishna Priya to welcome sir with a sapling. May I now request you to, sir, uh, say a few words and address the academics. A uh, very good afternoon to this August gathering. Uh, at the outset, I would like to first a respected uh, BP Acharya, sir, sir was uh, there in our department uh, right from the beginning as Secretary of Industries. And we are privileged that Sir is heading this as a one of the committee member in the FAPC. And after joining Sir, uh, this has FAPC has got uh, FAPC has got more prominence, and uh, Sir is taking a lot of uh, schemes under his uh, guidance and uh, uh, this uh, experience. And uh, just now, Sir was asking that uh, we have six MSEFCs in our Telangana state. Uh, and the sir was suggesting that uh, we should have a MSEFC uh, six uh, chairman councils meeting in uh, scheduled in uh, uh, FEDC. So uh, as suggested by sir, I will definitely take up this issue with our director, sir. And sir, 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 sir. Yeah, we can uh, fix some uh, limit over and above that for medium and uh, send our proposals to government of India, sir. 
but basically the act is uh, of government of india sir we follow this it, it is actually mentioned for micro and small as per the definition of act but uh, however if the value of the pending bill could be the taxation maybe we can have a workshop sir and uh, as per the deliberations of that we can send some proposals to government of india uh, to kindly consider sir uh, as everybody is aware sir uh, this is the first time our uh, present government has uh, taken up uh, framing the msme policy sir and we had a lot number of uh, meetings with industry associations and all the stakeholders and the msme policy has come to a stage uh, after uh, so many deliberations and shortly we are going to announce the policy in a big way and uh, maybe after the honorable minister returns from abroad we are going to announce in a big way sir and the policy whatever interventions are there uh, we are trying to enhance the capital investment subsidies also for uh, general as well as uh, sst entrepreneurs uh, as this the previous policy was there for the past 10 years sir so after the 10 years we are again trying to modify the policy and uh, come out with a uh, best policy we can have in place for benefiting all the ms uh, ms uh, ms ms is specifically there's lot of problems sir and uh, we have uh, uh, this slbc committee meetings also and uh, as we understand sir under ctmsp also lot of msms are approaching for uh, uh, collateral uh, free guarantee uh, but in spite of that they are not honoring and uh, the limit is now up to 5 crores so in spite of that they are not giving the collateral securities so recently our prince uh, special chief secretary jayesh sir had advised us to address to slbc sir to make slbc uh, one of the cgtmsc authority also one of the committee members in the slbc of telangana and this kind of issues can be taken up over there so accordingly we have addressed a letter to slbc and they are kindly considering to have it as a uh, member in the slbc to ensure that this collateral free securities are not denied to the worthy msms and uh, we are also slbc committee members so we are from time to time we are representing sir so this issue also will be taken up sir and the main agenda of today's uh, issue sir convergence of team uh basically we have 33 districts and all our gms of the field officers sir they are all technical officers as engineering graduate uh, and uh, msme dfo they have got lot number of schemes sir i have got a brochure also i think somebody has come from you are from msme okay. okay any representative from msme okay <laughs> sir uh last time also sir my director as well as myself uh we we went to msme sir uh, we requested them to have this convergence of central government space like pm egp as well as uh stand up for india scheme yes the poster somebody has come with me yes mr choudhary <laughs> i think chanda shekhar who was uh, uh joint secretary there he has retired sir a few months back and uh, i think uh, one and a half months back myself my director went personally to the office and requested them that they, we have uh, uh, 33 gms and we can make them nodal officers and all this uh, central government schemes can be converged we can actually every quarterly we are conducting this uh, gm conference sir so we call all the gms uh, for a one day two days conference sir uh, one month we have it here we don't interact with them. i think last year uh, once we had here also we sir will host it here. sure sir definitely we'll say just uh, next time we'll hold it here sir yeah. earlier also we had one meeting here sir uh, so uh, it will be our privilege to have it here sir because sir, we, we have for all interact sure sir so it's the industrial body morning you have your session afternoon post lunch our people can interact
So in the DM conference, we are also calling all the related stakeholder departments, sir, and uh, we are giving them a uh, half an hour slot to present their schemes so that our GMs also get acquainted because they are the nodal officers for the districts, and all these schemes can be percolated down the line uh, in the districts with their interactions and better understanding. So this also we are uh, taking up, sir. Off late, uh, we are calling all the departments to have a session. First day we'll take up the general conference uh, meeting with our GMs. Next day we are calling them. They can uh, give their presentations and interact with your GMs so that better uh, for better understanding and the MSMS uh, can be, uh, get benefited with the deliberations we have from time to time. So this activity have taken up recently, sir, and. Uh, Apart from this, we have uh, incentives uh, policy also, sir. Uh, but as uh, everybody is here, the uh, releases are a little bit getting delayed, sir. But time to time, we are addressing government also to release the benefits. Around 6,000 crores from you? Around 3,000 crores. It's a trending, sir. Uh, I mean, people got selected. MSME should be given the lion's share of that. So, giving the big industry. Priority. I know. Wealthfund has been given more than 250 crores under this. So, actually, Wealthfund 88% is textile, sir. Uh, the remaining comes under the uh, industries. Uh, they are releasing from their funds, sir, uh, textiles. Uh, uh, Basically, we are doing from industries, but on reimbursement basis. That as and when they get their budget, then they have to reimburse to the industries department, as per the industry, because they are getting very major budget. Uh, textiles absolutely are not getting. Really, states have a separate department for MSME. Yes, 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 UP, so, they have uh, separate department for MSME, separate secretary. So maybe that proposal should be. Yeah. Uh, we had threadbare discussions on this issue also, sir. So in the previous meeting, this was decided that one joint director with two ADs and four IPOs, this MSME cell can be created in head office exclusively to cater to the needs of such uh, this one. So, uh, department. Separate department in the beginning, yes. they're doing at least. Yeah, that also is for. As far as I know, some few districts, uh, few states are there, sir. For example, Punjab or some. UP, UP, UP. Officer, 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 officer. Even Andhra, they have, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Andhra also, it is there. Uh, anyway, uh, as of now, we are trying to have a one joint director with uh, uh, exclusively staff under him to take up the issues of MSME, sir. So one thing, since the topic is consolidated, is definitely the government should really give an importance to MSME, especially in Telangana. Otherwise, when we're talking about Vixit Bharat and if the incentives are not given, the schemes are not being implemented, it's very difficult for the MSME to survive. And today, we are in Hyderabad, if you talk of Telangana, we only talk of real estate and a little of Parma. The rest all are really suffering like anything. And um, sorry to say this, if I'm not being quoted, we give importance for our survival, like if I'm the government, I, for our survival, for the schemes which the government gives. So equal importance has to be given. The freebies we give, so they should think that this is also a freebie, which is genuine freebie, which is required for the people and the nation. So that has to be drive down to the government people, I mean, to the CM and the team. Probably officers like you can help us, and they have to focus if I need to survive. As you said, sir, government is on the same line, sir. That's why, though earlier days the MSM policy was never there in place, so this time they are exclusively announcing the MSME policy. And under MSME policy, sir, uh, particularly Telangana state, as everybody is aware, the land rates are as compared to neighboring states, we have very uh, land rates are comparatively very high, and the MSMEs are not able to offer this kind of uh, this fund. So we are proposing a new. Uh, we are we have uh, studied other state models, sir. For example, in Tamil Nadu and other states, instead of that, they are giving for a long lease to uh, 
ensure that the earlier uh, uh, the MSS don't, don't have to spend much of amount. So we are trying to have a policy where the industries can be given uh, on a long lease period instead of straight away purchasing that and all that based on that. So that interventions we are trying to incorporate in the new policy. So. Uh, and the government is very keen and uh, they want to have a user-friendly user uh, policy in place, sir. Uh, maybe by this one time, uh, it, it will be announced. And uh, apart from this, if any specific queries are there for, uh, from the members, then... Yeah, but that what happens is the sale agreement. Sale agreement of the safety was getting but no bank is to get the sale deal. By the time I need to get the sale, then I have to invest and the and start the operation. First is point. Sir, the issue here is, sir, actually. Banks can have a second share, sir, not any. But how the bank will... Uh, as for the, this land are being allotted, allotted by our corporation. Now, earlier it was TSIC, now it is TGIC. For SCST entrepreneurs, it is given on lease, sir, from 8 to 10 years. For exclusive for SCSTs, but for uh, general category entrepreneurs, straight away they can purchase it. Uh, uh, that, that is the privilege, the general law entrepreneur. And they can, but however, if in the clause itself of the corporation, it says that if the lease is there, then SFC has to be... Uh, take into consideration and they can finance from SFC. But apart from that also, if they are approaching banks, then you can always suggest that the banks can have a second charge. The first charge will be with uh, TSIC. Okay, SFC is the same charge, sir. Now it is not in the sector. SFC is no side track. It is not in the actual active in the field. Only banks are financing the industry. Yes, sir. Then uh, this issue we have to take up with it. <laughs> because they have to modify their policy. Yeah. Anyway, you can address a letter from uh, association also, sir. And yeah. They can always have uh, uh, give a instruction that the second charge, any bank is giving loan, second charge can be given to the banks. But the entirely it is a policy issue of the ESIAC, sir, for land allocation. Sir, I am Rangar, sir. Uh, regarding MSME policy, uh, we have to circulate the draft policy to the all stakeholders. Then you have to take the inputs from the ground level. Because uh, uh, so far, there is no draft report. We are releasing the directly, but uh, there is no uh, inputs, whatever it is there. So we have to circulate the draft policy to the all stakeholders and take their ground level report. Then we have to make a final report. I think uh, the secretariat they are uh, framing this, sir. As far as I understand, uh, quite a number of uh, industry association meetings have happened on this. this no quite that, number of, sir, sorry. Very, very, one meeting was held. Very, sorry. Yeah. There's no quite number of seats. And moreover, the consultant who was there, who has been appointed to do this, he, there's nothing about the industry policy. They have only learned in the first meeting. If they think they learned from the industry association only, and we, have, we are, we are, in fact, we are, uh, uh, we are sorry to say that the system itself is very wrong. But you are also, it appears you are the member of FEDSI, sir. Whatever FEDSI has interacted and given in writing also some suggestions are that sent, and that also they are considering, sir. All aspects are being examined by the government and taking into consideration. So it was, uh, my colleagues are suggesting they are taking into some form. FEDSI, we need to report me on yeah. Draft policy should be circulated to all the industry. To all the industry bodies. Yeah. So if they have some opinion and uh, debate and all that, then they, 
we have 33 districts sir all 33 districts we have brownfield officers designated as general managers yeah that i am aware sir do you have a representative at the taluk or mandal level that is my precise question no, no. is it needed or not is my second question actually we are running short of manpower sir we have about 150 vacancies not being filled for the past 10 years but with 50% manpower we are running <laughs> department because the public service commission also there are no requirements yes for 4 5 mandals in district there are around 30 40 man in district there are 30 40 mandals approximately we, we don't have manpower public service commission gives we have been addressing public oh. service commission oh. to oh. oh. industrial problem what is that then then at the dic uh, general manager of dic who you were there do you do they maintain a perfect record of the entire statistics of industries relating uh in within the districts right from artisan to laker large industry that do you mean do they maintain the record number one is it available for the public on demand number two number three do your gms or their other representatives attend the board meetings on invitation or on their own and suggest them help them in any improvement these are my questions thank you sir basically our gms are uh, very short of uh, manpower anyway they are doing best of it and our gms are designated as nodal officers and uh, any industry related see basically prime of ac every year they come out with a district profile and the district profile they keep updating from time to time and this district profile all industrial scenario will be there in that and they will be updating from time to time uh, it on the website also it must be available sir but uh, each district we give instruction that they should prepare a profile and make it available to the entrepreneurs so uh, it, it will be available with gms and they are updating from time to time <laughs> yearly once but uh, sometimes it may go up to two years also but uh, we are taking a tra- trying to update it with the what are the resources available there then uh, how is the industrial scenario over there it is in place sir. and uh, the second two is to sir what uh, you asked two questions are the other questions no no yes sir that is no purely related to industries you will be having sir for example artisans there is also textiles department so craft related and all that they maintain but industry related we maintain so there are several number of uh, state government departments still live there so for example uh, uh, if it is related to crafts or artisans and all that if textile textile related they maintain that so each department they maintain and they have uh, on their websites also all this information will be available and uh, any time all the guidance sense also will be available they keep doing the hand holding service as well and however as and when the public service commission assign us the manpower so we will definitely try to put in the manpower in place thank you uh, thank you dr uh, rajkumar uh, for this word so i have tried to you know highlighted uh, 
the role of Telangana government, you know, in creating a policy for the MSME, government is trying to come out first time for to with a MSME policy, which they will launch soon. And also where, I mean, there is a provision for increase, increasing the capital investment subsidy. And Sir has also, you know, mentioned about uh, various other roles as well. Sir, from SP and from the study team, as suggested by uh, Mr. Acharya, BP Acharya, we have a small request. So we have a small questionnaire, one page questionnaire. So we'll circulate with you, sir, if you can circulate among your DMs, because uh, we can understand that they're the, you know, main pillars, nodal officers of this. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful words. So we are uh, at the fag end of this, uh, you know, this session. After that, we'll start our main session, the stakeholder consultation. But before that, I would now like to request Gaur, sir. So Gaur, sir, I would request one very specific, uh, you know, area, sir, if you can highlight that. You know, when we talk about the MSMEs, MSMEs is not a different ministry, right? When we are talking to MSMEs, MSMEs is basically considered as an industry. So agricultural sector, labor sector, textile sector, all comes under MSMEs. There is no separate ministry for MSMEs. So obviously the schemes which are applicable to this specific sector, that are also applicable to all the MSMEs, right? So can we do something? Can we identify some of the best schemes and can we convert some of these schemes also? If you can highlight that part for me, I now request you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Karma. Respected dignitaries on the dais and of the dais, and uh, very senior entrepreneurs, and also a young team, uh, including my earlier colleague. Uh, it is actually a very interesting topic. And for the last uh, few years, there's a discussion on you know, convergence of different schemes. And whenever uh, we are implementing any of the scheme, so either from the state government or central ministries, they ask for convergence. So if I'm implementing one scheme for MSMEs, so again, there'll be question or no suggestion. So how can you convergence, you know, with the Ministry of Rural Development Program or Ministry of Tourism programs like that? And when you look at MSMEs, uh, so always we talk about uh, aspiring entrepreneurs and practicing entrepreneurs. So once you say practicing entrepreneurs, as Dr. Roy mentioned, we have different uh, entrepreneurs from different sectors whether it is textiles, food processing, engineering, pharmacy, pharmaceuticals like that. And when we talk about aspiring entrepreneurs, it may be you know, women or you know, the, uh, the students or uh, rural women or general entrepreneurs, uh, uh, people, general public who are looking for entrepreneurship. And there are several schemes as mentioned by our, uh, earlier uh, uh, speakers. So our ministry scheme, a very important scheme is Prime Minister Employment Generation Program. So irrespective of the sector, anybody can uh, apply for a particular scheme. At the same time, uh, Ministry of Food Processing, they are implementing a scheme, uh, PFM, uh, uh, PMFME, uh, formalization of micro enterprises. Again, it is, you know, people who are interested in food processing, they'll go for that particular scheme. And when you come out, uh, uh, come back to the skill development again, there are so many schemes out there. So more than uh, 20 schemes are there, which is being implemented by each and every ministry. So you take any of the ministry, you have one or other scheme for skill development. So most of the times what happened, you know, the, uh, there are some specific scheme which is targeted for innovators. But, you know, people who are interested just to start the enterprises, so they'll apply for it. And uh, other people are, you know, sometimes they miss the opportunity. At the same time, uh, when we talk about some specific schemes, there are targeted for rural women. But general public also apply for those schemes. And rural women, they are missing. So at the same time, uh, very recently, uh, our ministry is implementing, uh, you know, uh, there was a discussion. Our ministry is implementing one scheme, uh, PM Vishwakarma. Very recently, you might have heard about it. Uh, 18 uh, uh, trades are there. And uh, uh, everybody, you know, all the artisans, they are going for it. So here, again, there is, you know, different schemes are, you know, the uh, ministries are there, like Ministry of uh, Textiles, they also, also give toolkits, right? And uh, our own KVIC also give toolkits. So there is, again, duplication, right? So there are happening, uh, such kind of things that are, are there. At the same time, uh, our ministry is implementing very good scheme, uh, especially for revival of traditional industries, a the scheme of fund for regeneration of traditional industries wherein uh, you can focus on uh, agriculture clusters, agro and food processing, 
where rural women or farmer producer organization can apply. Otherwise, we have handloom clusters, handicraft clusters, and also artisan-based clusters like uh, brass crafts, metal craft, you know, furniture like uh, you know, carpentry, wooden work, you know, wooden toys clusters like that. So uh, sometime back, especially during COVID time, there was serious discussion and it was thought that all the soft interventions, like soft skills, like organizing some skill training, design development workshops, and exposure visits. So the departments which are having core expertise, so they will take care of these things, like soft interventions, soft skills. So if some exposure visits are there, soft skills are there, Ministry of Textiles will take care of all the projects related to handlooms and handicrafts. And all the projects related to organ food processing will be taken care by Ministry of Food Processing. Like that, there was a discussion and uh, there were some orders also, but it was not materialized. And related to infrastructure, all CFs, common facilities, whatever no, uh, clusters want to create infrastructure, that will come to MSME because of the core uh, you know, uh, activity of the ministry. So where we have different sector experts, they will take care of implementation. So that is how it was planned. That was a good approach. So similarly, uh, you know, for uh, uh, especially for uh, young people who are, want to start the businesses, for them also, if we have such kind of only one unique scheme, that will be better. But as Dr. Roy mentioned, there are different state government schemes are there. So uh, very good schemes. So in government of Telangana, uh, our government is focusing on ST community who are, and to promote uh, innovation, they're working. And similarly, the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, government of uh, uh, um, uh, Maharashtra, they're also working for, you know, uh, young uh, team, uh, generation to start up, you know, the, uh, through uh, Mukhya Mantri uh, Ujjam Vikas uh, uh, scheme. So like that, different state governments also implementing. So what I feel, if we take uh, the best practices or best you know, components of those schemes, if we take out, and if we have one central scheme, that will be more appropriate. One for you know uh, aspiring entrepreneurs, that to particular target group, maybe for uh, science and uh, you know, technology students, and some maybe exclusively for rural women or rural farmers, anybody who are uh, having you know, with a rural background. And uh, if others are also interested, so they may, they may go for it. But again, this is a discussion. So how to segregate and you know, make the people the, uh, for the particular uh, project. And at the same time, so uh, related to uh, marketing, also, you know, uh, Ministry of Textiles and our ministry and Ministry of MIT and every ministry has got international cooperation scheme under which we encourage MSMEs to participate in national international trade fairs. And the small variations are there with respect to, to benefits for the MSME sector. So if we have again under the, this particular international cooperation scheme also only one component which will be uh, you know implemented by a minister of MSME uh, incorporating you no know, requirements of all other sectors that will be best what I feel. So like that there is a possibility for convergence in each and every area of business operations like common facilities in a clusters as I mentioned earlier there is a scope minister of textiles is implementing a scheme minister of my Ministry of Might is implementing, and also other ministries, and even food uh, park schemes also there. So where there is a lots of similarity, so which can be you know focused and you know deliberated and you know make one scheme. Uh, there, there is a much possibility. So that will really help uh, you know people who are looking for you know applying for the particular scheme, which is most suitable for them and easy for uh, you know uh, applicant also to submit the proposal. Otherwise, sometimes. They may approach Minister of MSME at the same time Minister of Textiles or Minister of Food Processing. And uh, different schemes, you know, there is a slight variation, uh, maybe with respect to uh, requirements or uh, structure of the uh, you know, report, whatever. So if it is not in line with the scheme guidelines, so definitely the particular ministry will reject the proposal. So earlier, you know, uh, we had that kind of experience. So we have a, a scheme aspired. Uh, it is related to incubation center, uh, Minister of MSME. Uh, similarly, now Minister of Textiles and also Ministry of Food Processing have come out with this uh, scheme. So sometimes we see the proposal, uh, which is relevant to Minister of Food Processing, they will submit to Minister of MSME. 
and they'll come with that proposal and ask for sir this is what our proposal can you help out all so then definitely the project cost will be different and the requirements of the uh, you know, ministry will be different so definitely it will be rejected so in that case you know if we have uh, uh, similar schemes uh, of uh, either sectoral uh, schemes otherwise based on the you know, target groups in generally incubation centers institutions will focus uh, sir uh, 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 for telangana you know the, we have supported uh, to implement the six lbi sir in the six itis uh, so under aspire scheme of our ministry so they are the, basically where we have targeted you know rural women to you know get supported so like that there is there is a lots of opportunities actually for convergence and uh, today uh, every scheme you know ultimately at the end of the day we talk about holistic approach and you know our holistic mechanism so here definitely there are opportunities but it is you know uh, deliberate we have to deliberate discuss and you know give good strategy how we can convert you know make it happen right especially uh, what i uh, what i feel especially as dr roy mentioned particularly you know uh, aspiring entrepreneurs right but others may be a little bit easy uh, to uh, make the things so with this note you know i uh, request all the you know participants uh, to give their comments as well yeah please thank you yeah 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 After you were telling that a food processing proposal has come to you, and after traveling for about 15 days, then you say it is not our. You send that it is consuming a lot of time. That's true, sir. Yeah, that's what I mean to say. That's what uh, that's what I mean to say. We let us have only one scheme and one process, and one so that it is easy. That is part of again, sir. Uh, no, whatever you have mentioned, no, it is part of application, right? So okay. if single yeah, point. single point, yes. Aspiring, new applicant. Yes, sir. Yes, very much possible. Very. Much. That's what I mean to know uh, mention. There is definitely it is possible. So again, it has to be you no know, decision to be taken by the government of India. So that is now under discussion. For that only, you know that study is going on. And as you mentioned, sir, uh, sir, sir, Raj Kumar ji, sir, jo question kiya tha. Actually, you know, at the field level, all the they they are very much stressed. Actually, GMs are also stressed now. right so they are you know helping and from it was but limited but definitely they are, they are working to support all the people uh, uh, in a particular geographical area but again you know the requirements of target group uh, varies from place to place and again you know the documentation even uh, 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 entrepreneurs msme sir uh, don't mistake me uh, you know the, most of the times even they and we also observed you no know, entry point when uh, not at sustain their businesses no most of the msmes they are reluctant even to register themselves that is another biggest challenge now database i hope are now they have taken several initiatives they have proposed under ramp scheme sir uh, whatever you have mentioned i hope uh, the, the, the all those issues will be addressed through ramp scheme uh, with those interventions thank you thank you both sir so you know this is the end of this formal session now next one hour there will be grueling discussions on the convergence of different schemes now i would like to thank before i <laughs> now before uh, before i close i would like to you know thank all the dignitaries present here for your wonderful views so this inaugural this session actually you know has perfectly set the context now next uh, one hour will discussion uh, discuss what are the various state teams are there sorry central schemes are there uh, we will show them one by one their objective i mean target targeted beneficiaries one and so forth and after that we'll discuss whether there is any potential of convergence now broadly there will be three parts of the presentation our team will present number one we will present all the central sector schemes because that is the you know core objective of the study so we will uh, you know show you all the 22 schemes which is Uh, at present uh, you know prevalent in the you know ecosystem msm ecosystem then after that you know which the gorter has mentioned about the ministry scheme different ministry schemes but the problem is if you take into consideration all the ministry schemes it's roughly there are 500 schemes so it's very very difficult to you know identify some of the schemes and converge it so the idea is can we identify some of the best practices from this 
and you know suggest in the form of a case study you see this is the possibility of convergence maybe 5 6 and also in terms of the state if we can identify some scheme you know which are really helping the beneficiaries we can recommend to the government that you see these are the schemes available in x states y states lucknow telangana you can see these schemes these are wonderful this can be you know termed as a best practices so these are the three aspects we want want to discuss so sir thank you so much for your uh, wonderful you know all these for, for perfectly setting up the tone so uh, we will start the presentation in another two minutes yeah so i will request my team to um, start the presentation so we'll do so uh, dr sweety will uh, present the scheme and also uh, discuss about the what are the objective of the scheme uh, you know targeted beneficiaries so on and so forth and today we may also help uh, dr sweety so as has been required i will also speak. okay so what i think the plan of कहां में पॉइंट कर रहा था यहां नहीं कर रहा हां so uh, this is our discussion on uh, requirement of convergence of team uh, related to msmes uh, so first of all i would like to uh, explain the objectives uh, the first one is to examine the extent and present level of convergence of msme programs uh, so is it is it there that there is some level of convergence a possibility of convergence already existing in the existing schemes uh, the second is to evaluate the government of india and state level schemes and programs related to msme sector with which we will be able to identify the challenges uh, a lot of challenges we have already discussed for medium enterprise in, in, in our previous session so we will try to identify few other challenges related to overall msmes and this will also help us to identify the best practices uh, maybe uh, the best practices in terms of scheme uh, announced by the central ministry of uh, msme or some other central ministry or uh, from the state government and the last one is to the, recommend the possible convergence opportunities and what should be the steps taken to do that convergence next yes as uh, kanak sir was has said multiple times that there are three sub components uh, of this uh, study the first is uh, to check whether it is possible to have some level of convergence within the central schemes announced by ministry of msme uh, so uh, we, we we have reviewed 22 central schemes on parameters such as goals target issues specific sectors targeted by the scheme eligibility criteria uh, who are the beneficiaries what is the funding mechanism and what is the level of government involvement so we have already reviewed 22 central schemes on the basis of these uh, parameters Uh, so, uh, but uh, the first part would be to identify whether it's possible for the central schemes, the 22 central schemes, uh, to converge or mer merge into one scheme or few four or five schemes. Uh, the second part is uh, because there are uh, so many schemes from different states, so it is not possible for us to review all the schemes uh, from all the states. But we will try to review schemes from six states. and in that uh, we will try to identify uh, some flagship schemes of the state government uh, we will try to identify the best practices of the state government and also we will try to identify because a lot of schemes announced by the state governments are the same central schemes with some addition and some modification in the name so is it possible for uh, for us to suggest some recommendations on that point ki okay this is the these are the similar schemes suggested by the state governments So is it possible to merge it with uh, central central government schemes in some form? Maybe in com maybe some component can be merged, or maybe some kind of financial model can can be worked out uh, on the basis of who will uh, share the burden of the scheme uh, between center and state, or maybe from the implementation point of view, because a lot of schemes 
are announced by the central government but are run by the state governments so whether whether that kind of possibility is possible so we will try to uh, discuss those things uh, in the second component and lastly there are various uh, ministries like ministry of textile food processing ministry they have their own schemes for that particular sector which is related to msme uh, so uh, is it possible for us to identify some of the best practices from those ministries and suggest the central msme uh, ministry ki okay these are the best practices uh, these are these are the uh, ministries which are running an umbrella program and the same kind of thing can be replicated uh, by the ministry of msme so these are the three components yes uh, so uh, as we were discussing in the last session these are the 22 central government schemes uh, so um, we would like to have a discussion on that like uh, most of these schemes so how many of you have heard about all these 22 schemes if not 22 how many uh, schemes have you heard about uh, so is it visible to all of you yes sir ask whether okay okay so we'll do that we'll go back so before that uh, sir should i tell them uh, the theme then okay okay yeah so uh, 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 before going into discussion uh, i would i would give you an example of how there is replication of uh, scheme under various themes so what we have done is we have uh, uh, categorized all the uh, requirements of the msme under these five themes uh, first is credit and financial assistance uh, second is the the help which they need for technology and quality upgradation third is uh, infrastructure development uh, fourth is uh, training and skill development and the last one is marketing assistance so uh, the previous slide which was showing the 22 central government schemes what we have done is we have categorized under these five themes so if you see for instance pmegp prime minister employment generation program the same scheme is coming under they are providing some kind of credit and financial assistance and they are also providing training and skill development okay so similarly uh, there is another example of career vikas yojana this uh, scheme is covering five, four themes training technology and quality upgradation infrastructure development training and skill development and marketing assistance similarly there are other schemes also which are coming in which are there so this this shows that there is overlap of schemes in terms of what is their thematic area and uh, similarly when you will see each of these schemes you will see that they have tried to divide the same like they have some financial uh, assistance but they have uh, what ministry has done they have uh, uh, same financial assistance for a specific category where that is needed or not whether some financial assistance should be there and the beneficiaries should be uh, same or beneficiaries should be some targeted beneficiaries should be there so these things we will discuss so this is an example of how this uh, themes are overlapping between schemes raman change kar do yeah so go back what is the required vikas yes sir specifically required yes sir obviously you address it down yes sir okay don't i mean there are industries which are pure msme yes, which can't sir. be categorized in a particular sector yes sir is not some food processing not some leather not from textile but yes, uh, msme per se yes sir so we, uh, it will be making a mistake by saying there is an overlap okay sir just because it is uh, they uh, appearing in uh, pm employment guarantee scheme yes, uh, general uh, we we need not remove the coir vikas yojana coir vikas yojana obviously they are addressing one particular sector yes sir and they are addressing the whole gamut yes sir so this is what i said it is intended like that yes sir so this is uh, what uh, i was just uh, i was telling before that is it possible like coir vikas yojana and then there are few schemes from the ministry of textile they are like umbrella schemes So is it possible for us to uh, replicate? No, you think from the other point of view. Yes. An industry which is neither coir nor textile. Yes. What will happen to that? But over all, so for all. If you say that this is repeated uh, elsewhere, remove it. Ah. Uh. The industry which is not in that tech sector will uh, miss out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So MSME is only for the core MSME sector. Mm. Others are sector specific uh, schemes which are intended like that. Yes, sir. But yes, sir. So, the 
So similar to that, is it possible uh, to have, you know, uh, make it company uh, schemes so under these particular themes, so that there will not be duplication, only under that particular. See, uh, MSME is an umbrella word, yes, sir. and it is it is not defined by sector. Mm. It is defined by investment and turnover. Anyone, any any industry which has a turnover of 50 crore and investment of up to 10 crore will fall in small. Mm. But these are choir or handloom, etc. These are sectoral schemes. There are separate ministries for this and they make schemes specifically for that sector. Okay. So we have to differentiate between these two. Yes. That is the point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and bring those specific sectors also think of the general company there is one aspect. And all these five parameters are applicable to all the MSMEs. Sir. Mm -hmm. So this okay. is a different this is a different aspect altogether. There are all these five parameters are applicable to each and every MSME. That's how I see. The only point is that like food processing, choir, handicraft, whether we can draw away with it and bring it under the general thing, is it viable or not? Paper to identify and try and see to what extent it can be generalized for all MSME sector. Yes, Suppose definitely. textile sector, there is a good scheme which is succeeded in the textile sector. What can we learn from that and extend it to MSME in general? Hmm. That's what we should look at. Yes. Not not confuse ourselves by saying the same scheme is there in choirs. MSME ministry per se. Otherwise, you'll get confused if you if you uh, mix up with 500, 600 schemes. If it's in addition, hmm. uh, uh, that particular sector industry is getting extra benefit, they will choose that instead of this. If scheme A of the MSME ministry is. Take, you know, advantage of one. Yes. So either if some industry wants to take advantage of a textile ministry scheme, obviously MSME will not extend the benefit. So it it cannot be from two sources. Okay. So so that's okay. So you leave it to the industry to choose. Yeah. So so you you leave the sectoral so, schemes uh, of textile ministry or food processing so ministry uh, not dwindling in between. It is, but it is a, it is within the, it is a sectoral scheme within the MSME. So it will, as Sir is saying, it will fall in all categories. So don't worry about that. It's okay that you have put it here. So you go ahead. Yes, sir. So this is what we have observed in the MSME. Yes, sir. Hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is the available as well as central? central. Hmm. That kind of thing are going. Yes, sir. 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 Okay, so this uh, should be done, or there should be an umbrella scheme for overall MSME. So this uh, this is this is what it comes from this Koyar uh, Vikas Yojana because they have targeted Koyar sector and they have announced some scheme. Similarly, when we get into details of other schemes, we will see that the beneficiaries are in some schemes uh, youth, or in some scheme SHGs. So they have uh, the same scheme, but the because the beneficiaries are targeted, beneficiaries are di different. They have announced the same scheme with different names. So this is uh, this problem is there. So we need to uh, discuss that. That that's why I was explaining it to you. Lucky sir. Uh, sorry. <laughs> You have to make a matrix. One is first is the innovation, second is the uh, subsidy scheme, then third is the skill uh, skill development. 
fourth is the uh, the sector specific so something like you have to make a matrix uh -huh. then what are the schemes are there you have to match that then only we can uh, oh. so you have to make some eight or we 10 parameters PM. so which parameter the scheme will comes under PM. then we have to make them so that it will be you can find out where the scheme is missing on that one sector maybe different from the other you can find out thank you sir we wanted to see the picture so oh. employment generation program has anyone avail any benefit under the first one pmegp also that data the pmegp pmegp kvs agarwal kvs kvs is सर इन ऑल योर फोल्डर यू हैव अ टेबल so you have a scheme a sheet like this you can refer to this yes taking the data from the annual report yes yeah, annual report data okay report. okay collect from the department okay sir we'll get it how many free agents uh, how much they have achieved what are the marks team wise given that will tell us with the successful or successful what is it more than 100% thank you see kitne logo mera benefit 1 crore mein 10 lakh banda Suppose this is a flagship program, as he say, for the micro sector. Let us say, what has been the how to revamp it, how to make it stronger, to identify this as a flagship program, as he say, it's the most successful program. Ah, and number they choose what can be done, which is what feedback. That should be a recommendation. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we will collect those data. Yeah. So, so basically, these are the twenty-two. Yeah, yeah. So we will separately go and meet. Yeah. Yes. So as you can see that. Yes, yes, sir. Please. Can I have your view? So these are the twenty-two schemes. Central sector. Yeah, yeah. 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 How many can be merged into one? So instead of twenty-two, can we have just six schemes? 
because there are a large number of schemes so people do not know about so many schemes they are not able to access so if there are similar schemes can we merge them can we merge three into one so that instead of 22 we have just five five schemes five flagship schemes and people are able to you know access so many a times what is possible if you look at the agriculture ministry there is a scheme called rkvy rashtriya krishi vikas yojana so you have many components in that okay but it's a different thing that it is run through the state government this is for beneficiary so if there is a scheme where you know you merge three and you say a b c so this is the msme vikas yojana and you have four components a b c d lean z whatever and you can say you can take advantage of either one of these four or you can take all the four depending on what you want so then it becomes life becomes easier so the question here is that out of these 22 which schemes do you think can be merged together and how many it, it can be reduced into what number 22 can become 5 or 6 or 4 or 10 or it is just not possible to merge any so that is the question yeah, first one, you have to make a list, but this is the innovation. Second is the capacity building. Third is the proposal. Fourth is, no, you have to make a list. You make a eight or ten, whatever it is there. First, you make, first is the capacity building. Second is the uh, skill set. Third is the marketing intervention or procurement. Fourth is the incentive, whatever it is there. So you have to make a list. Then you have to make a matrix. Then only it will be simplified. Then some of the schemes may be coming up, innovation coming up. Then manufacturing. Ah. Yes. What we thought that they were five, five, four, yeah. Like taking into consideration the all you know, components. But yes, we are open to suggestion. Like the five money areas are credit and financial assistance oh. or whatever. Yeah. Because But all 20 So that this could be one of the suggestions instead of like Ministry of Commerce, instead of going for sector wise, like mm. Yojana, because there is they no can... separate department, there is yes. a coconut development board mm. there, but there is no department. That's why they have uh, yeah, well, the MSME. Yeah, all 22 has to be put into five. five uh, there is a challenge there, that's what we want to discuss here. No, mm. possible, try to categorize all the
totally different sphere of thought okay. can we can we convince a uh, med based on project cost cop we say cost of project means of finance means of finance i am not talking cost of project up to 1 lakh second up to 1 million that is 10 lakh up to 1 crore up to 10 crore up to 50 crore 100 crore or straight away 100 crore this based on, based on the cost of project Which it should come under MSME, either M, my micro small. All these are the parameters which apply for application. I mean to say in the end, whatever. Can we purely condense based on the cost of project? This is my. Take up. No, you should not. Ah, answer. 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 micro enterprises under 250 medium is already defined why you are uh, duplicating so here is some of the schemes like jed and lean manufacturing and the innovation all can be combined together to make it as a one scheme yeah no, no, that's why sir that, no uh, that lean and jed are linked together actually jed, lean and jed are linked together they are equal So, but there are two. Is there equal? No, no. Lean, lean man, lean manufacturing. No, jet is a certification. It is a part of the lean manufacturing, actually. Okay. Oh. Okay. Logically, it makes sense. Oh. But actually, it might come. Yeah, yeah. Sir, yeah. Tell me, na. Oh. Which of us is in each market? Oh. Can be merged together. That that is not true. Like there is a possibility. Can we not convert? Yeah. Lean and jet can be merged into one. Yes. Yes. <laughs> No, under lean scheme, you have to give the jet certification part as a subclass. Yes, sir. Instead of having a separate, so in the lean manufacturing, there is a manufacturing competitiveness, whatever it is there. No technology and upgradation, whatever it is there, you have to comes under the entire basket of the improvement of the technology. Then the what are the uh, machinery they are going for upgradation? All can be combined together. Okay, sir. So similarly, another basket so also. One point, sir. Here, uh, 
we have already combined all these three actually it's under champion scheme ah. okay so, under champion scheme jet lean and uh, msme innovative are in one basket only you have stored in different uh, three categories so, and uh, in msme innovative scheme these three components are earlier different incubation design cleaning and ipr now it is in one basket already it is there and all three components are in one scheme champion scheme already and you can think of uh, other schemes it's also wonderful you know what so basically the champion ke kuch champion ko nahi kar sakte but name not champion but already there are other alag alag hai yeah yeah and it depends on the other scheme of the we can convert the state uh, best practices with the sample schemes so that uh, that would be more practical approach i think so we can identify the yeah the six states so what you have identified yeah. now you have to identify which are the best practices available and then, then how can we uh, put into our schemes to make it one scheme very good all other okay okay mm. uh, So, sir, similarly, in other baskets also, sir, if you can identify which of the schemes can be merged, like in first uh, credit and financial assistance, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven schemes. So, PMG having uh, different yes. objectives. Yes, sir. MSC is having different objectives. Yes, sir. So, this is what we are. Saying. MSC is only for collateral free loans. Yes, sir. This is what okay. we are saying. so they have like financial assistance ke liye scheme hai but they are uh, different just because the beneficiary are different maybe the form of financial assistance is different ya to subsidy de rahe hain ya to tax incentive de rahe hain ya to fir financial help kar rahe hain directly capital subsidy de rahe hain so different forms of financial assistance on that basis either uh, there is a difference or on the basis of micro medium and small so mm -hmm. the similar kind of scheme are dif like announced differently just because the targeted group or the process or the implementation process or the implementing agency or the way of funding is different so is it sensible to like if if the government is trying to provide some kind of financial assistance is it uh, uh, is it uh, possible to convert all the schemes related to is leave the flagship schemes like uh, pmegp but is it possible to convert the schemes for the financial assistance giving one objective and giving different beneficiary like okay this is the different beneficiary but maybe for women we can provide some additional benefit so that kind of thing should be done or not this is what we are asking we have to see the target group and uh, how we are giving the science assistance what the quantum of assistance is yes sir the uh, cdtmsc it is not a uh, loan it is a collateral fee collateral uh, fee loan given by the banks yes sir and pmgp for the green projects it is not for the ongoing projects 
This is new okay. industry. Yes, this is also one kind of beneficiary, That's whether right. it's new MSME or the old one. So this bifurcation. Only for the new, only for the new first time. Yes, so, so is it? So, so uh, you are you are what? So is, this is what we are thinking. Ki, is it possible that the new old ke basis pe jo ne ki scheme announce kar dete hain? Is it possible that similar scheme rahe? Wahan pe hum beneficiary add kar de ki this kind of like new MSMEs will be given this much of additional benefit. So this is uh, this is what we are thinking. In PME jee bhi to ek flag ki scheme hai. Jaise ki saab bata ya. उसको उसमें क्या चेंज कर सकते हैं बट इफ यू लीव दैट पी एम यूजीपी अदरवाइज ऑल्सो वी हैव स्कीम्स ना दर दिस इज लीव पी एम यूजीपी अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट वी हैव वी आर हैविंग फोर फाइव स्कीम्स इन फाइनेंशियल असिस्टेंस लाइक सी जी डी एम एस सी देन एम टी डी ए स्कीम IC scheme, National एस सी एस सी हब स्कीम सेल्फ रिलायंस इंडिया एंड देन अगेन पी एम विश्वकर्मा इज ऑल्सो फ्लैक्सिप वी आर लिविंग दैट यू हैव मार्केटिंग असिस्टेंस ना पी एम एस स्कीम यस सर सो दैट इज फॉर द डोमेस्टिक मार्केट डोमेस्टिक एग्जीबिशन एंड आई सी फॉर इंटरनेशनल एग्जीबिशन दैट यू कैन कैन बी मेड एज अ पार्ट Uh, so, so there is a similarity one similar domestic and another international okay so pms and ic scheme yes. and then there in marketing assistance we have national scst hub scheme that can be converted to marketing uh, is there no on that we can acha national scst hub scheme has many other components also it is not only one component in that yes sir so it's that's why it's there in credit and financial assistance also that is specifically target to scst group So this is also. Uh, so that cannot be a club because that is a specific team. Targeted okay. to a particular. Uh, so yeah, this is the confusion we oh, have. Oh, so PMS and IC you can combine, madam. PMS and IC we can yeah. combine. Okay, and then yeah, that is domestic and this is international. That is the difference. Both are having financial assistance. Okay. Subsidy is provided. Okay, sir. Let's be combined. Yeah. You can distinguish. This is a domestic. This is a international. Okay. Okay, sir. so uh, very good point so can you just maybe we elaborate on this yeah samapti that no the scheme is there international and domestic you can have a one and you can mention a is domestic b is uh, international oh so, that sc scheme you cannot uh, combine any other because that is a specific target group you cannot do that And also the Kadi, you know, Kadi is only belong to the Kadi and village. You cannot, you cannot combine with any other. Only Kaya sector is only encourage the Kaya sector. So we cannot combine with the other one because that is a specific sector. They are given a consistency to encourage the Kadi industry. In the, in the marketing, number one and number two can be merged. Oh yes. And Yes. So another important thing here. See, one aspect is just looking into the twenty two schemes. But another thing we were discussing, the manly here, telling us, yes, yes, twenty two is not a number. Yes, twenty two has component B within it, which needs to be looked at. हाँ, दी वाला फाइव। एंड बेटिकली मैकेनिक के लिए फाइव, पांच करूँगा, कैसा भी करते हैं, कुछ जबरदस्ती कर लूँगा, ऐसा नहीं होए। नो 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 नो। कुछ कुछ बोला गया कि आप बच करो, फाइव को बंद करो। ऐसा नहीं होएगा, मैकेनिक के लिए एंड बेटिकली भी बंद जाओ। ऐसा भी ग्राउंड में क्या हुआ था? हाँ, अंकित सर। Just I want to make a point here that we are getting confused here. Most of these schemes mentioned here are one scheme only. Like PMS scheme is comprising of IC scheme. It is specifically meant for one industry. Okay, for MSME, for promotion of micro and small enterprises. So what we are trying to do here to take inputs from industry members that what is their problem. Like under CGT MSME, 
bilateral free loan is guaranteed, but nobody is getting. And there are SLBC meetings and continuously that they are being asked for putting up the collateral. That is the main object. That is not a mandate. That is not a mandate. So where we are suffering from industry point of view, if somebody is having a lack of skill manpower, industry people they do not know that from where they can get the skill manpower. Right, sir. See that evaluation part. What we are trying to do, the amalgamation of different schemes. These are specifically made and intensively discussed thoroughly in ministry. And several similar schemes are there to different ministries. And if a person is applying for one scheme, he is duplicating that scheme in a different department. So here, see, concising all these things, like we do not know that. PMAGP is falling under the category of say skill development as well. No, it is not that part of thing. It's a mandatory thing that they have to take one EDP program to take the loan. And the CGTMS is the same. So we cannot club these things. These are separate schemes. We need to understand these things first. Am I correct, sir? Please. Sir, the MSME schemes, you know, all are unique and independent. But as you know, sir mentioned, only IPR and these three schemes we have merged. Under champion, other schemes also there. But you know what? What I suggest would be better to look into different areas, suppose startups, market related, technology related, and in these areas, all not all important. So many ministries are not there. Five to six major in uh, ministries, whatever scheme they have, even if we suggest you no know, convergence of those schemes, that is more than enough. Because in rest of the schemes, like in Ministry of uh, Heavy Industries, so they don't have you know these kind of projects. They're entirely above this you know MSME sector, right? And other ministries have very few. Only because we are targeting Ministry of MSME, because we are meeting all requirements of all the sectors. You now we have so many schemes. But if you look at other ministries related to this very scheme, few schemes are there. So we have to compare and link. So yesterday, if you remember, I shared related to skill development. Almost there are twenty schemes are there. So instead of twenty schemes, let us have one name, whatever uh, Prime Minister X Y Z name, and under which all these stakeholders, for the benefit of all the stakeholders, let us have only one scheme, right? And the same scheme will be implemented by all the ministries. It is like rationalizing. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And uh, basically. You take all best practices. Okay, okay, the purpose of the convenience of the implementation. Implement. Convenience of the users. Users, yeah. Instead of confusing them with too many schemes, convergence not merely because there is a duplication of the same area. Convergence because it's convenient. Convenience. The rationalization also has a meaning. Meaning. Even otherwise, because they will be easy to implement. Easy, easy to create awareness. Possibility where there is a possibility, only few areas you have to select and you have to work it out. Not possible, as you mentioned, uh, in all the sectors, all the areas, not possible. Are they, but are you also interact with the MSME officials. Yes. What is yeah. The yes, sir. Yes. 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 Yes.
So my view is, uh, I've been actually a sales engineer. I've been working. My name is Murli. I work for a company for Wellwork Systems Limited in Hyderabad. We are also MSME. The point which I would request you is, so you have about some number of schemes. You need facilitators to guide the MSME entrepreneurs in the reach. What scheme could be suitable for what line of business operation? Unless that is, because schemes are already defined with some amount of plan and actually focus. So that need to be streamlined with the connectivity for the need what they have from the industry, as the staff was indicating. So they need to understand the entrepreneurs first in detail. So basing on those lines, they should be able to connect them. This is what my view, facilitators are essential in MSME area. The, that is a must. And now marketing assistance also, as you said, very Absolutely. 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 They are not aware. Yeah. And now take the example of my company. We are doing actually the Veda Edutech is the actually organization we have, a subsidiary organization. We are doing the education for all the schools across the country where we do the tuition tutoring by actually web methodology. By uh, for this we are under losses. So this we want some assistance to take off. We are actually going to the root of uh, uh, the other uh, corporate social responsibility framework as well. We are thinking on that ground. But if any scheme is there which can give us a lift, that could be a good entity, but we are not aware of that. So we need actually guidance on that account. So th this is what is my view from my side. And also, my also... And also the marketing assistance, what we are talking about, the big group organizations, some, some ex big actually large scale company, if they have actually ability to vendoring to this small scale MSMEs, so having the connectivity for the focus for sustainable order line, that also should be planned, actually, so that they can sustain on that account. That's a key factor as you get MSME circles. Otherwise, I establish the organization, but I don't know how to actually get the orders for the organization for the related product. It doesn't carry sense. Actually. So we need to look into that aspect also. These two entities are very, very important. I'm pretty sure. It, and also the finance, the, the schemes what which are related. As somebody was indicating, the name for the stake actually scheme is there, but they're demanding actually collateral security. So those realities to be actually grounded well, actually. Thanks a lot. So here I, I want to ask you a basic question. Uh, you know, company owners and also, sir, you have worked on MSMS. What are the schemes that you feel that, you know, uh, is one of the best schemes for MSMS? Can you just name out a few, two, three, so that we can identify what is your model? Yes. The, the problem is the finance. They are not getting the money for their working capital. That is one of the problem. Second is the skill. Because uh, skill sets are not matching, because all are computer engineers, no mechanical, no electrical, and uh, no, everybody wants to be a computer engineer. But who will run the machines? They are having a three course machine, but uh, there is a, one operator is not available on that to run the machine. Is there a reality? No, my question no. is a little bit different. My yeah. question was, can you name out a few team? Yeah, one or two but you want to name out, but you have to help them out. You have a hundred teams, but where where is reaching to the MSME? That is my question. <laughs> yeah, that is okay. But MSME has reached that, sir. Ah. No, I understand. Ah. One of the issues is understanding the ground level challenges. Yes. challenges. And also, what could be the potential policy? Yeah, these schemes are not aware of MSME. What are the schemes? 200 or 300? There are uh, 20 or 40 MSME officers are there in Balanagar. Whether they have educated the entire, there are 40 to 50,000 MSMEs are in Hyderabad. Have you aware of that? Sir, can I ask you the same question to you? Have you availed any of these schemes, whatever has been mentioned? To my knowledge, I have no insight, to be honest with you, on that account, and uh, I have to check back my company. But they have been actually struggling quite a lot, actually dealing with this uh, Veda Edutech area. 
and uh, the way what i could see is that uh, if uh, the promotion is done these are the schemes what we have this is the suitability for this scheme yeah. so so you are saying awareness about this scheme is very low right yeah, yeah. awareness is there awareness is very चैलेंजेस गेलोर Yes. So again, you know, I am defining. There are three objectives. Please understand. There are three objectives. First objective are, you know, we have this twenty-two schemes from the central government. So question is, can I plug these schemes under some basket? Like, let's say, just for taking example, we have done this. We have identified five such schemes. If we talk about this team, is there any possibility? Like already we had earlier instance, like MSME champion team. That team has been derived by you know merging some components of the three teams. So question is whether there is any possibility for merging some teams. I think we have identified a couple of teams. What uh, you know the stakeholders are saying that the year it can be clubs. and it can be named as a a and b a will talk about the international company b will talk, talk about the domestic company but from this house as of now we have not come across any suggestion of merging or converging some other things related to the central government so there lies the you know the second part of this so if we are not able to merge or converge any component of the central government scheme now we need to look at the second aspect What is the second aspect that Gaurav Sir was mentioning? We have to identify some of the sectors, like sectors like let's say leather, let's say textile, let's say rubber and plastic. So, uh, you know, electronics, some few sectors. So, there are ministries are there, separate separate schemes, different schemes. So, question is, these schemes by those ministers are they similar in terms of uniqueness or in terms of you know delivery with some of the new central government schemes? So earlier example was also there. Just some, you know, some of the component can be converged. Like Gautam has given an example. Let's say under the skill development, this basket. Let's say four or five ministries have almost twenty schemes. So. हाँ, they are different ना, that's what. That is not ending. You look at MSME sector, this is only this is a template. Other ministry can also think of. Yes sir, this is. Yes sir, that's what I'm saying. We we want to put it as a success story. We make the four or five cases, not more than that. That's the appendix. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 What time for the appendix? You you focus on the main report. Focus on the main the task on hand. Main task on hand is to see carefully whether any of the yes. the twenty two is it exactly what there are you have missed out check the gate. Okay. Yes, sir. 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 Yes,
they are question. they are working uh, with the msmes with the associations and you are telling awareness is not there you are trying to create lot of awareness about this scheme wonderful in different platforms so some people may be left out that is a different story but uh, we are well connected with all the associations including ftcci and uh, all the associations uh, are aware of, of all our schemes and uh, it may not be percolating to the village level or down level we are trying our level best because we have only one office uh, whole of telangana here in balanagar so what i suggest is your team should visit our office have a meeting with our office absolutely absolutely and uh, from our meeting then you'll get lot of inputs what questions you are asking now sir nick Next week we can do something. I will set up a send you an email. Yeah. Next week we we can plan some meeting. I will uh, give the email ID, madam. Uh, the official email ID. You please send there. Then uh, we can arrange a meeting. Yes. And uh, those inputs will be very useful because this is our ministry's uh, target. Yes. Uh, task yes. is given. So field level office uh, input also very will be useful. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So DM CIC answer from your end uh, this thing. So, if the, so we have another workshop planned in Lucknow actually on uh, 23rd. So before that we wanted to conduct these meetings so that I mean once we go into that workshop we'll have more information from the you know discussion to be more informative actually. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we can enable it. Yes. Okay. So we will quickly close in another ten minutes. Sir, uh, can you have any views or anything else? Good afternoon, Anandan. I'm from uh, Timber Industry, and uh, in our uh, association, we have got around four hundred units with us in and around city. And uh, some only some part of our association members are the furniture manufacturing, or we are all some are cottage industry, some are. small medium and large in this in this is only the large part and the medium part are registered with uh, msmes and only they are able to get the benefits of msmes and uh, some below the large and we are unable to get the benefits and we are not aware of msme schemes because maybe our approach to going to msme is very bad or we are not aware of msme schemes so it is vice versa uh, and uh, our association is looking out for a structure whereas we want a hub whereas we want uh, to get in all the our artisans uh, carpenters uh, all uh, uh, we want to get upgraded and come to one place so we are looking out for a cluster whereas we there are 400 formils or the furniture manufacturing unit or whatever you call, uh, we are called as wood based industry and we want to come up with a cluster a cluster in and around hyderabad sir sir yes sir yes sir uh, thank you for your uh, sure sir yes sir we are uh, mainly now we are uh, we are now a traditional yes land uh, sir we are traditional we are traditional industry and uh, in our industry the age gap the age group has uh, changed all youth has come into this second generation has come into this and uh, we would like to upgrade ourselves so uh, we would like to upgrade our sir sir and uh, sir. okay uh, so now we are uh, looking out for land in four parts of hyderabad uh, if uh, we are provided with uh, 400 to 300 acres of land at one place we are around six, uh, that 300 units can come over there Or 300 or minus plus 300 units into a, because there is now the city has expanded so much we have a, a logistics coming in uh, the lorry is coming in going out it has become a very big uh, problem for us and major of our 
wood is procured and we are importers of wood and whereas local wood is not available and uh, we want to we are importing lot of wood from scandinavian countries from the coastal, uh, coastal countries or uh, the african countries uh, so there is lot of scope and uh, what we came to hear that the government of india is coming out in a big way in manufacturing of furniture and export of furniture so we would like to uh, collab with the msme or with the city uh, or which where we can get this help this is my aim and this is my vision for my association Before just, 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 just. Uh, there is a scheme which we, you know, which we started last year in UP. For this is a big bottleneck availability of industrial plots, industrial land. So we have a scheme which is known as pledge. So these are private MSME parks from 10 acres to 50 acres of land. so anyone can buy that parcel of land agricultural land or you know non industrial land or or even if you know in the in the master plan it is industrial use and nothing has been developed even that can be bought and then we quickly get the give the permission to convert that into uh, industrial use what happens is that if yes yes so so it is yes so so we we are doing that on a fast track basis because we monitor that and what happens is that suppose uh, somebody buys if government wants to buy land let's say the cost of land is 10 crore but if the government buys government will buy at 40 crore four times you will have to give compensation under land land acquisition act now if a private person is buying he or she can buy at just 10 crores so how do we facilitate because we save 30 crore on procurement of land so what we do that we have a benchmark that 50 lakh rupees per acre we that is the benchmark for development cost of land so suppose somebody has bought 50 acres of land so for converting that into an industrial park 25 crore would be needed a ballpark figure 50 crore 50 lakh per acre so now what we are doing is that we are giving loan from the government from the government what we are doing is that we are give, we have created a corpus and had that developer gone to the bank he would have got a compound interest of 10% or 11% or whatever from the government we are giving that amount 90% of that amount at a simple interest of 1% per annum yes 1 1% per annum simple interest for 3 years then after 3 three... industry department we have created a corpus we have created a corpus from the budget we have created a corpus so abhi 500 crore rakhe hain abhi usme se abhi usme se 50 60 crore gaya hai और अभी स्टार्ट हुआ है लास्ट ईयर 11 11 पार्क सैंक्शन हो गया है और और भी आगे होता रहेगा तो ऑन फॉर जस्ट वन परसेंट सिंपल इंटरेस्ट पर एन एम यू आर गेटिंग लैंड व्हाट यू आर गेटिंग लोन फॉर डेवलपमेंट द लैंड इज प्लेज इन फेवर ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट एंड एज यू कीप ऑन पेइंग योर लोन ha huh, so so it is released because you will keep when you sell then there is a tripartite agreement there is an escrow account so the loan goes into the 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 loan which government is giving to you for development is going into an escrow account the money when you are selling it is coming into an escrow account so one part one part comes to the government i must say allot the point to allot the loan part developer allot to Uh, unit A. A. Unit A should have outright sales deed. Yes, yes. So, so, so yes. So, so that person out of 50 acres, if some unit is taking, let's say, half a acre of land or one acre, that will be as soon as the agreement is done, that that will be released by, by the government. By the government, the pledge will be over. So there will be then 
free, free land. Land can be sold. Uh, land can be sold. <laughs> yes, yeah. land can be sold, and already we have sanctioned eleven parks. A lot of private entrepreneurs are coming forward to set up. Ha, वो तो तू दिखा देंगे, वहाँ तो बुलवा देंगे. So yeah, this is the this this is this is pledge pledge park. So this is something you know which can be replicated in other states also. Examples which locations are available. Saharanpur, Kanpur, Hapur. Furniture के लिए लिया है. Saharanpur. हाँ, Saharanpur में they have taken for furniture. Kanpur में they have taken for something else. Aligarh में they have taken for electrical goods. So इस तरह से 11 जगह हो गया. सर टू टू बी प्रिजर्व सर द रॉ मेटीरियल गोइंग टू सहारनपुर द जोधपुर एंड इट इज ऑल फ्रॉम तेलंगाना एंड आंध्रा It is all going from Telangana, Andhra. It has been processed. They are exporting, and we are importing again. From and we are uh, we are selling for hundred rupees, and we are getting that back by fifteen hundred rupees over here. That is called value addition. Value addition. So my aim is uh, why don't we do it in Hyderabad, or why don't we do it in Telangana? <laughs> so that is my aim for my uh, organization okay. and i want to take this in a very bigger way and uh, there is lot of youth coming into this if not if i am if i am not going ahead this youth and this industry is going to go to some other state correct sir yeah so i want to retain this business to telangana only because you lose the opportunity we are losing the opportunity not just because we are not aware of the schemes and we are not uh, making a forest department or the department of industries uh, we don't have a literal uh, conversation with them so that is where we are lacking thank you yeah can, can i say my point please yeah so first of all thank you very much the way what actually you have been looking way indicating is one is p when an msme is starting the organization what is suitable for them and that guidance they need that is on the facilitation to be done by facilitators once they have established then they are actually doing their business the second entity for facilitation for them we need to have facilitators msme facilitation system business actually business facilitation centers we need to have the reason is these facilitation centers msmes will encounter about four to five areas of issues one is they will be requiring labor they will be requiring machinery they will be requiring finance at appropriate time and they will be requiring manpower so looking into these factors these facilitation centers many of the graduates can be employed to be honest with you i did not have the courage to speak in front of arun story quite long ago and our country when we have to accelerate and reach a good destination with a good scale of turnover in the most the msmes are contributing quite a lot for our country and if we have facilitation centers in our country we are pretty sure i did i wrote a article also on this account that we need to have just graduates can be employed with proper security they will be maintain the data they mine the data connect actually for the need to the uh, organization which is doing the facilitation somebody needs finance somebody with 1% they are able to offer in a specific cluster but if they are able to offer at 1% to say any of the msm which is a good product line and that information is known to them they can actually avail that finance immediately these facilitation centers can be just mind by many of the graduates can be deployed for this operations they can play the role that is going to have a very good success in our country unless we do this problems are problems and uh, unknown things are unknown areas will be they'll get stuck this what my view is thank you Wonderful, wonderful. So last week was two three things. Come, come back. So you are almost no comment, sir. Anything? This side. Anybody else, sir? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. This is Ram Kumar from DC, Delhi Main Center of Commerce and Industry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I am from Delhi, Delhi Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Our founder, Mr. Mr. Narendra Vikram, 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 Mr. Narendra Vikram
and the national president is Tadisi Mahavari Kumar. Sir, I just want to know that uh, yeah, in the previous post which you have said, I think uh, Sandra Pili has been not been mentioned in the uh, scheme. Uh, actually, there are, uh, in Sandra Pili, uh, around 62,196 crores amount has been sanctioned for the 2,64,196 applications. Okay, stand up India. Yeah, stand up India. Oh, start up India is a separate scheme. Start up India is a Stand up India also. Stand up Mutra. Stand up India is only for SC, ST, and women entrepreneurs. SC, ST, and women entrepreneurs. Yeah. And uh, you can use Sand of India in SCST uh, also, but it is uh, Sand of India is doing it with Sand of Mutra. But uh, we can include Sand of India in National SCST hub also, sir. And the other thing is, um, yeah, we can merge it. And the other thing is, uh, there is a T Pride scheme in Telangana, T Pride, T Pride scheme in Telangana. Uh, in that, for SCST, uh, for for females, there is a 35% incentive, and for males, 35% incentive. Same program can be uh, taken by the central government also. It's an excellent program being uh, started by uh, last government. Yeah. People. And the other thing is, sir, sir uh, recently here, uh, you have mentioned many schemes, and you have mentioned many schemes, and uh, in only one thing has been mentioned regarding the SCST program. In the SCST, there are many programs has been mentioned under SCST hub. There are single fund registration, special marketing assistance for scheme, the scheme for beyond uh, scheme, export promotion concept, reimbursement scheme, bank loan processing reimbursement scheme, bank guarantee charges reimbursement scheme, capacity building management for receiving reimbursement scheme, like that, many schemes have been incorporated in single national SCST software. Like that, uh, the schemes which are mentioned over there, can we can, uh, like, how buckets which you have drawn, we can mention all the schemes under the one each bucket only, so that everyone can go and check whether which scheme is applicable for us, and then we can ask for that. Yeah. 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 We need to have rail network. We will take the example of Bombay. From uh, VT to Karjat, they have actually the rail link. So it, it should be economical travel should be facilitated for all level of classes to travel. So rail network is a must. We don't have, including Hyderabad, right? And uh, you want to go to any industrial estate, you have to have your plan, actually. We don't have any rail network connectivity at all. So we have actually Kadidan industrial estate. We have actually our Balanagar, GD Matla, and uh, Charlapalli. There is no rail network connectivity. This is the first priority we have to look into the matter. Now it has become a big space. <laughs> no, pardon me, sir. Charlabadi to GD Matla, there is no connectivity, sir. Okay, so it will be close. I can see that you already you are you know, extending calls. So uh, only one request before I ask our experts to you know, give the concluding remarks, Sir and Amit Sir, well, sir. So uh, I would request from SP, so SP needs some help. Health investment will be connect to you. Sir, as you have mentioned, we'll see you in a meeting. Similarly, you have all the industry associations. I'm requesting you to provide us support. We have a small question here because was the core objective of this workshop is, you know, the issue that could come up from the ground level. And ultimately, if you suggest something to the government, you know, the suggestions, policy recommendations should be linked with this, you know, issue which is happening, actually happening at the ground level. So, idea is that. So, what we will do is share a questionnaire, also it's a small questionnaire, no questionnaire, any other questionnaire is a very, you know, painful task because we'll be busy from tomorrow onwards again on our own, own work and all this. And it's a very simple 14-15 questions questionnaire. It's a, you know, objective, subjective type. 
So you simply just fill it up three cell first so that I mean you know you can quickly analyze and come up with a good report. So before we close, sir, uh, I would uh, request uh, Acharya sir so if you want to just say something. Is fine? Ah, uh, just please you. You please pick up with uh, the additional director, uh, uh, Mr. Raj Kumar, and uh, the MSME officer to have interaction with the field staff. I have requested him after 15th August between uh, from between 16th and 20th. So one of the days he will call five six of the field level GMs uh, who are also heading the facilitation council. He take feedback about this, uh, how to merge the schemes. Are there what you are presenting here? Uh, similarly, they are in the MSME department. If please fix up. I mean, one day here, one day there. Cover both these offices. So you validate what you are saying because they are the people who are implementing from the government side. They will tell their difficulties. You will say mechanically, I will merge A and it is not like a, an easy marriage. You will break in two days. So it is not like that. Okay. Uh, so another small announcement. In the twenty third, we have the we have three of workshops planned. The second workshop will be in Lucknow. We have a you know online facility as well there, so we can connect to online also. I'll share the link to all of you with all of your contacts to us. If you feel that you know you have to attend that, and also you can if you can recommend some of the people to join, you are also welcome. Dedicated email ID where they can display it also. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So regarding uh, the question I uh, shared by us, uh, you have uh, the hard copy as well as uh, we have uh, taken your card, so we will share it through email, so you can reply back to us by filling up the questionnaire. Uh, so and if uh, in case if you want to send directly to us, you can share it on msme uh, dot asci asci at gmail dot com. <laughs> So msme dot aski at gmail dot com. Yeah, you just write it down. You send a note that and then he's so write it down what he means. So otherwise, uh, tell the time frame also within a maximum within a week time. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, it's a very simple question. I'm just fifteen fifteen questions. So if you can. Yes. Okay. Yes. So this is the email ID msme dot. Askme@gmail.com. So from this email ID, we will get an email. Already the hard copy has been circulated to you. So we will send the soft copy of the questionnaire as well. If you can just pull it up and do it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. And we'll share a Google form as well, right? Yes. 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 So, uh, am I sure anything you wanted to? Okay. Fine. So anybody else? So if that is not there, wonderful. Thank you so much, all of you, for your wonderful support. I hope uh, you know we have our research team has taken down so many points. We'll quickly on you know try to uh, consolidate all these points and try to create a report. And that also helps for you. Thank you so much. Okay, T. I think is there in outside, so we will have T and then we'll talk. Thank you.